Hello, hello all. The stream is starting. How's everyone doing today? Hopefully well. I'm excited to do some build crafting. Okay. For anyone who's new, I'm Black Hat. Pleasure to meet you. I do RPG content, dungeon crawlers, survival games, open world, etc. Mainly Path of Exile, which is what we're going to be working on today. Uh, we're going to be working on updating some of our old Path of Exile League starters, because I intend to make videos out of them. And I want to show them off. Before we do that... Before we do that... I will attempt to find the right build. There we go. Right build is right build. This is the old version of the build, so it's going to be a bit jank, but uh, that's okay. We just, we'll just let it be a bit jank, that's fine. Oh. Gotta add my streaming now thing. Where is the thingy? Is the thingy. Hmm. Oh, God. Okay, we're just going to pretend that doesn't exist. Oh, all the, uh, all the affliction stuff has been ported. That's why everything is an absolute fucking disaster. Right. There. Well, that's fine. Doesn't matter. Okay. See if we can find a map that actually functions. Let's try Arena. What can this build do and not do? Uh. Remember. This is a uh, Pyroclast mine. Uh, saboteur that we're going to be showing off today. Hi, Ron. Where am I? Where's my other map? There it is. I don't know where that was. Grand River? Yeah, that can work. I wonder if our master missions are going to become anything, or if they're just going to get turned into dust. Oh well. Oops, that's not right. Overlay is supposed to look different than that. That, that should not be there. Hmm. There we go. Okay, Power Class Mine Saboteur. Fairly simple concept. Throw mine, mine explode. It is going to change a little bit when we enter a uh, when we enter the new league, as you would imagine. But this is going to be mainly what the actual build will look like. Has really good clear. Has surprisingly good single target, despite how messy it looks. Because the the uh, pyroclast mine. Uh, projectiles actually do target things.
pretty high DPS in general. It is a very good League starter, and we are going to be updating the build for Necropolis. And it ha there are some, like, really nice changes that are going to be coming in with this build, too, which is making me pretty happy. Chief among them, uh, we are going to be having Mines Can Explode When You're Moving, so that we won't have to have detonate mines in our left click anymore. That's just a thing of the past for mine builds. Very nice, because when I'm moving, I want my mines to be detonating. That's more or less the way that it's always been. So I'm happy that that can just be a mastery now that will exist, and that will help us a lot. It will take the place of another mastery, probably, but such is life. I have taken this build to Uber Elder before, so I'm pretty confident in its power. It's not a 10 million DPS build or anything, but it is pretty decent. Certainly for the actual input that uh, you add to it. We're going to be trying to make a... Uh, we're going to be adopti adopting a League Start version of it, so that uh, it is as cheap as possible. And really, this build doesn't need a whole lot. All it needs is just basically the gems. And the gems aren't special or anything. I swear that strong boxes now open when you're near them. That is really weird. I always love the clear for this, this build. It's really, really nice. Very simple, but very effective. I haven't even been using my curses. Just haven't had a need. Okay, gonna set up and and it runs away. Damn it! Got my mines. Okay, and goodbye. Generally, it's a pretty effective build. I've I don't really have too many issues with it. I'll show off just what it's set up to right now. Uh, there, this setup is going to change a lot because there's things wrong with it and there's things that are outdated with it. And this is from multiple leagues ago, so there'll be some issues. This is from Harvest specifically. So we have like some very nice Harvest rares going on here. Like all of, all of this is like really well-crafted scepters. And there's the old uh, uh, shade form uh, Shadow of the Lightless, and we have we have an old style tactician. We have the old style Wise Oak and Xeria's Promise. I mean, that's just part of life. We even have gripped gloves for some reason, which increase projectile attack damage, which doesn't affect a spell skill. So apparently, I didn't know what was going on back then. Also, there's like enchantments and stuff, you know. It's a bit weird for what we have now, but we will be ad adapting it to something that actually makes a little bit more sense for where we are. Let's see, what's the passive tree look like right now? Passive tree is fairly simple. Increased mines, increased crits, increased elemental damage, health. Mines, mines... Mines, dual wielding stuff, crit, health, mines, bit of spell suppression, movement speed, evasion, life. This is a pure, a more or less a pure life build. The Avengers Shield is kind of just extra. I don't think does this have a flesh and flame. I'm sorry. What? I have a Primordial Might in this build? <laughs> what? What? Why? Do I... Do I have... Do I have a Golem in this build somehow? Where? Oh, I have Castle on Death Mines, that's fun. Uh... I don't have Golems in this build. Why do I have a Primordial Might socket?
Oh, we were testing something! Right, okay, now I remember. We were testing the flame golem of uh, the meteor. That's why we have weird primordial stuff in the build. But basically, this build is just mind damage, crit damage, health, and power charges. And other charges, really. It's a fairly simple... Uh, it's fairly standard for what you'll expect from a mind build. And we will be working kind of off that. I do intend to make some changes to this build. Some of this stuff just doesn't really fit the way it used to, and some of these things that have been picked are not the same passives that used to be there. And, like, I'm not going to use Smoke Mine now that it's been changed and all that. So, we're, we're going to go switch over to uh, Path of Building. Okay. Where's our Power Class Mines? Okay, so this was me trying to update the build. I remember I did add some stuff to it. And that has made the build a bit strange. Oh yeah, I added the Grand Spectrums. That is fun, but what we're looking for is a cheap version. Is this just the basic one? Yeah, this is just the basic one here. Wow, that is a really low melee evade chance. How are you doing today, Ron, by the way? I forgot to ask. Doesn't even have a suffix. Strange. <laughs> okay, let's actually pick out something... ...basic but useful. Where on his catalysts are cheap. We'll pick up that. Does have so much health? Oh. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, that's the old Shroud of the Lightless. Do we want to use the Shroud of the Lightless still? Hmm. does benefit from a lot of Abyss Jewels. We don't really have a lot of Abyss Jewels sitting in the build yet. I mean, Shade Form is nice, but having... N not having the Elemental Penetration support on it is kind of painful. So we're probably going to pick something different, let's, let's be honest. Hmm. Okay, what should we replace the chest plate with? We could go for a rare one. But. Body armor. What would fit? Why are you not sorting? Oh, because this was before full DPS was a thing. Okay, so we have four projectiles from per mine, 23 mines maximum. On average, we'll have probably about 10 mines in use. Okay. So when we're not prepared, when we haven't prepared for something specifically, 3.8 million is what we're sitting at. That's fair. Reasonable amount. Okay, I'll switch out this for something. I do like the evasion rating that we get from it. It'd be nice to keep that. The only issue, we do have two greens and four blues. Ideally, a, a green-blue base like this is, is kind of ideal. Hmm. First of all, I'm going to swap the Shroud of the Lightless just because we don't, we're not, we're not using a legacy one, so. Hmm. Recommending Infernal Mantle. 
Yeah, no. I mean, because, like, we're always on low mana, so this means we'll be taking 100% increased spell damage, so let's not do that. We got a replica uh, covenant, but the only problem with that is that it will mean that we will be reserving life, I believe. Will we, will we be reserving life? No, we won't be reserving life. Wait, is it energy shield cost for the replica one? Energy shield cost. Okay, that's interesting. Well, we don't have, like, reliable energy shield at the moment. So that's kind of not amazing. Honestly, we could decide to go for Victoria's Influence. It is a really, really good chest plate for mine builds in general. It looks like it's slightly better because Pyroclast is a mine, is a mine build. Uh, we will give me reservation efficiency, which is good, and it will give me more or more aura effect, which is also good. That is going to reduce the evasion rating, though. Is that because this has higher? Yeah, this is higher by default. This has six sockets. This doesn't. <laughs> so, a bit, a bit questionable. It is also easier to get a Shroud of the Lightless to five than it is to get a Victar's Influence to six. Just five linking something is always going to be easier. That does make it like an easier starting point. That is worth considering. We won't actually keep this, despite the fact we don't really have many or even any gems so or jewel socketed besides the one that's in the Shroud of the Lightless. A lot of Victoria is just the section as an option. Get rid of these because those are legacy and they don't exist. Uh, okay, the tactician doesn't exist anymore. Well, that's kind of a problem. Okay, what are we going to replace you with? Hmm. <laughs> Annihilating light. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, not letting light's good, but unfortunately that require that just just destroys our elemental resistances, so maybe not. Maybe maybe not. Heart of Innocence? So it's nice to be able to do a wield. Like it's it's always a pain getting the uh, bigger stabs, especially martyr like martyrs, because they tend to be more expensive. Just in general, than most things. We don't have any block chance, do we? Oh, we have t yeah, ten percent block chance already from something. Why do we have block chance? Where does our block chance come from? Spell dodge. Where does our block chance come from? Why do we block? How do we block? Where block? Block. Dual wielding, uh, no inherent block. Wait, what? Oh, because we're dual weird wielding, we have inherent block? Or is it because of the... Oh yeah, so this is... <laughs> this, this passenger is 12 versions out of date. <laughs> Talk about old. Yeah, that just destroyed the password tree. <laughs> I was using this, but now that's... No, it was just a mess because it was a mess.
I would be curious, if I take this off, does that remove our block chance? Yes, okay, so you get a block chance just by having, just by dual wielding. That's weird, considering that, like, it doesn't really tell you that. Like, in-game or anything. Well, this is only higher because my resistances are currently fucked. We're not doing that because we're going to increase our crit multi soon. Okay, let's let's redo our passive tree. Based on the one that we had in the game just now, I'm just going to recreate that roughly because it's an easy and decent starting point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cannot be damaged. And detonate, detonate mines triggers while you're moving. Cool. Crit multi versus uniques. I don't have any life res yet. Our effect on me doesn't do anything? Wait, what type of ores do I have? Ew, because I don't have any auras. I just have her a herald and a skitter bot. Or two skitter bots. It's a bit of a mess. Only 36% chance to evade. That's really awful. <laughs> that is really, really awful. Okay. I'm up there. Pick up our vision rating there. Do we don't really need that? Okay, so wonderful thing that they added rec not recently, but like in the last few leagues is the ma the mana mastery that gives mana reservation efficiency. So that's always worth picking. And if we do pick Victoria's influence, then we will. Um. Oh, that only gives us two percent unreserved mana. Might be more than that. Huh. 34 to 32. Oh, it might be because we don't have all the mines out that we could. Technically, we can have up to 23 mines out. And if we do that, then it will save us up to 6%, which is not bad. Also, the the curse or, or the uh, aura effect is not going to be helping us yet. as we don't have any auras yet. And that is going to change. We're going to fix that. Also, if we can, let's get our auras out of our weapon slot. Ugh. Every time we weapon swap, there's going to be a problem. Don't really want that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I used to do Void Sphere Steel Skin in uh, Cast One Stunt, because Void Sphere has a tendency to pull things towards it, which effectively stuns them because they're they're not able to move as they want or or use any skills so it is kind of like a nice little defensive layer sometimes but they're like kind of flailing as they move but i have since found some better stuff okay automation hasn't been added yet the looks of it Okay, so we'll leave it as cast when stunned. Just for now. So that will be, the cast when stunned will be automation. Be great. Which else should we automate? Uh, so, void sphere cannot be automated because it has a cast time. It only works instant stuff, like steel skin. Any other active gems that we'd want to add? Better instance. It's interesting. You could have Righteous Fire as an instant automated. That's kind of cool. Pyroclast Mines of Sabotage. I haven't even looked at this yet. Okay, that I have to like actually compare.
Okay, the damage dealt is is way different. Let's just add the pyroclast here to make this easier to pair. Okay. Okay, so the basic pyroclast mine deals like a flat amount out of the gate, and then it adds more fire damage to hits against enemies near it. Uh, each mine, sabotage, adds less damage out of the gate, but more for enemies near it. For each mine that gets activated, so sabotage. I, I don't think it actually would matter whether you have a lot of enemies. Like, you just need to have an enemy nearby. So I think Pyroclast Mine of Sabotage is probably meant for if you're throwing a lot of mines at once, so if you're really setting up. That actually might be worth swapping to. We'll have to see how that works. It's like Pyroclast Mines of Sabotage do a little bit more damage based on this. When they bow when you have two throws, so ten mines out, they do about the same a little bit more to sabotage. Okay, interesting. We're gonna put a pin in sabotage for now. We'll mess with that later. Now, we are going to finish setting up our other stuff. So we cut out, we cut out these two. We want to go here. It will give us more life and mana. But cost one more point. It also mean that we can't easily access the uh, large nodes. We do need to go down here anyways to access the Revenge of the Hunted, which we definitely do want, so that is... We do have to go down there. And more evasion from body armor, definitely. Dual socket, definitely. Fervor, definitely. Fritz. And more evade chance, awesome, awesome. More health, good. Health is always good. Let's see, how are we doing here? Take that off for a second. So, 241,000 for four points. So, 60,000 per point. This one is three points. Whoa, that's way more. Uh, this one is 30, 35,000 per point, so that's not very good, but it gives more AoE. You detonated a mine recently. Oh, wait. That's the problem. You detonated a mine recently, yes. Mine's detonated recently. You can pretty reliably say... I'm going to say four sets, so they're five, five each. I think that's reasonable. Use a movement skill recently. Uh, I mean, often. Let's say yes for now. Hmm. Yeah, we don't need a shock effect added. Whatever the shock that will be set up will be accurate. Don't need chill effect added. Uh, we'll be an ignite and a burn. Let's go back here. Now, how much is this? It is less. Because <laughs> oh, these nodes only give AoE. Okay, so we're un undoing that. They'll, it'll be fine without the bonus AoE. It's only... 
35% AoE bonus. That's not really worth it for effectively 30,000 a piece when we can get 60,000 here or 110,000 per point there. Let's see about these. So these are only 25,000 a point. But give you more cast speed. Cast speed's good. Really nice, in fact. This would give us how much less cast speed if we took it out? Let's see. Wait, I thought cast speed affected throwing time. Does it not? It does not, apparently. Fair enough. In that case, we might actually need to change some of this then, because I don't know if I need this section at all. Do we need this? 40, 45,000 a point. No, not worth it. Are 60,000 points. This one's probably a lot. Yeah, that's that's 120 on its own. Uh, attack and cast speed, not as good. Uh, let's see. Any of these have like specifically good stuff? No. We have some spell leech or ES leech. The problem is that I don't think, despite being a spell, the, the mines actually count towards energy shield leech. Even if they do, we don't have very much energy shield to begin with. Feels kind of feels kind of pointless. Let's plop that back in. Ninety-three thousand on its own. And so that's two two eighty-six for five. That cluster on its own is 57,000 per. He's a 37 piece. That one's 24. Good dump. Let's take that out for a second. So that's back to about 50,000 a piece. That's not very much. That's pretty bad, actually. For now, let's check it down here. That's 50,000 a piece as well. But it takes less. I can plop the crit mastery back there. What else do we want for damage? Hmm. Maybe they want fire. You could probably grab snow forged, actually. Yeah, that's. Ooh, yeah, that's 80,000 a point. That's really nice. That is really good. Uh, we don't ex we don't add exposure yet, but that's probably going to be what we'll pick. The inverted monster elemental resistances is probably not going to be worth it because we'll have a lot of elemental penetration eventually. We'll probably want this mastery eventually, but I'll leave it unchecked for now. Okay, what do we have for dual-wielding masteries? Oh, it's just caster. We get interrupted. Uh, we can do more spell damage. I don't want to have to plan to be interrupted. That's not reliable. Usually if I take a caster mastery, it's this one. The uh, increased cast speed for each non-instant spell you cast recently. But if cast speed doesn't affect mine throwing speed, then all the only benefit really is going to be how fast it casts our travel skill. I don't think there's really anything else, because all we are is pyroclast, some automated things which have to be instant by default, and some and our travel skills. Like, there's not really much else. Yeah, so that's, that's not going to be worth it. We could grab a Spell Suppression node, which also has some Energy Shield buff on this, which is, eh, not bad. Plus, if we grab it including the uh, Lucky Spell Suppression one, then that gives us up to 43% chances to Spell Suppress. For anyone who's not familiar, Spell Suppression basically cuts your the spell damage down by 50% that you're taking. It's pretty darn good in general. We also gain uh, phasing on when we suppress spell damage. But again, that's not incredibly reliable. If we had more spell suppression, it would matter. 
We might want to grab this one down here, because this gives a lot of spell suppression. And then if we add the lucky chance, then it brings us up to 72% spell suppression already, which is really good. If we grab this, that brings us up to 90%. And we suppress spell damage recently, phasing, plus you get spell suppression when you're phasing. So we take this, then we have a chance will bring us about up to 100% if we've suppressed recently, which is in the last four seconds. Not bad. Hmm. We could also take this if we are hitting a being hit a lot, but that's only 1% of the damage is being taken away. And if that 2% chance to not suppress spell damage is enough to prevent us from suppressing even one hit, then that has... That, that's not saving much, much health, then. I think what we're going to do is we're going to swap these. We'll put the phasing one down here. And since we'll get this one first in the order of building things, we'll be taking the spell suppression select there. Bring us up to 90% spell suppression. Sexy. Okay. Uh, we're going to move mines cannot be damaged down to here. Detonate mines. Detonate mines is triggered while you're moving. Good. Actually, we might even need to take that first. It's important enough. I don't know. Like, I don't know how, it, like, if you'll be able to put stuff on your left click anymore because that's that's going to affect this a lot because I've heard whispers that you won't be able to socket things into your left click anymore which would mean that this would be more important here but in general mines are very easy to destroy without this mastery so as far as I'm concerned the this mine mastery is required for any mine build no matter the character no matter the play style which Kind of makes me feel like mines shouldn't be damageable to begin with, but... Eh. What helmet do we have? We're just using... Yeah, we're just using an evasion helmet. Okay. And no caster mastery we really need. Uh, so these are 32,000 apiece. These... Give us nothing because they're for movement speed cooldown. Do I care about movement skill cooldown? I don't know if I do. I mean, they're also paired with cast speed, and cast speed's not useful to me. So, technically, this will give us more damage if we do that. That's another 64,000. Okay. This... Okay, so now we're moving into the territory of Mine Aura Effect. Mine Aura Effect is... a fucking confusing thing, so I'll try to explain it the best I can. Basically, ev not every mine, but some mines have a certain effect that whenever you're near that mine, it... Like, that mine before it detonates has that effect on that monster. Or on that creature, or whatever. Uh, this is a effect you can add to its aura, where each mine, so if you have, let's say you have five on the ground, reduces the damage by 2%, so that's 10% damage reduction, which is really good. You can also add the increased damage taken, but... I don't know. I don't think that's as valuable. I feel like it's more important to keep yourself alive than it is to do damage, generally. Why am I not seeing a benefit from increased aura effect? Interesting. Pyroclast has an aura, does it not? Am I confusing myself? No, it has an aura. Okay, yeah, the aura for Pyroclast is uh, each mine adds 
blank to blank fire damage to hits against enemies near it. So, that's kind of like its debuff. And with the debuff we just added, it'll also make them deal less damage. Hmm. I think the problem is that it doesn't know how to calculate, like, how much to calculate for each mine in this. So it doesn't really know how to calculate the aura. Which is fair. Also, Arm, we should turn the music back on. I always forget to do that. Hmm. Wow. Power Class Mine of Sabotage apparently is a lot more powerful. Hmm. What's the difference? Is there any other differences I didn't know before? Oh, holy shit, it's triple the reservation. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. So this reserves 24 mana per mine, this reserves 6 mana per mine. So we can have triple the number of Pyroclast mines than tri Pyroclast of Sabotage mines. So if you're really just running around throwing like one or two sets and you're not really having a chance to set up fully, this is probably a better choice. Also, this is where it kind of begs to have a uh, Victoria's Influence. Because that just reduced the uh, mana requirements a lot. Okay, so that gives us 200,000 more, more um, DPS, and it also gives us 9% more uh, mana. Is really good. Did tank our evade chance by 2%? 2%. Also means we can't have that extra Nautic Eye. But then again, Victoria's Influence gives you enough extra damage that even taking out a fully damage-suited uh, Hypnotic Eye is enough to still buff it. So, that's probably going to be worth it. So at this point, you can only use 9... Higher class mine of sab mines of sabotage versus the effectively up to 23 normal pyroclast mines. You're usually going to have 10, but up to 23. So if you set up your pyroclast mines, your like normal pyroclast mines, you can have 4.3. 3 million for maybe two and a half seconds, but then it drops down again. What this is basically suggesting to me is that we need we need to stick with uh, the power class mines of sabotage. That seems to be the best option. What I think we also need is more mana reservation efficiency, because this is kind of... We're kind of struggling with it. Get a chunk over here. That brings us up almost to... They bring us up to level 89, effectively. So bring me to go again. Hmm... Or some of your skills can only affect you, or skills have a 1% more aura effect per 2% of mana, mana they reserve. 4% more mana reservation efficiency of aura skills. What does that kill all of damage? Oh, I understand why it kills. Okay. So, auras can only affect you. So that means that the each mine adds X to X fire damage does not work. 
just like flat out cannot apply to enemies. Because auras can only apply to you means that they can't apply to your allies or your enemies. So that actually is kind of dangerous. You can also grab that. Go socket. Nice. Okay. 4%. This is 6%. Don't really want to dump that. We're 3 over now. You can always figure that one out. Especially considering that we do already need to add a couple more things here. Like, we can't... There's already no life mods on this, so we definitely want this life mastery. Oh, I could take away the evasion mask, part of the evasion. That's my only life? Oh, that's not my only one, because I have another one down here. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm only at 3,400 health. Wow, that's really low. <laughs> well, I mean, my equipment's probably a mess right now anyways. I mean, helmet's decent. Gloves are weird as fuck, apparently. I don't know why I'm using these boots besides the spell dodge. The fuck? That, there's no reason for me to use an amulet that's that bad. I have some really weird shit here. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll I'll have to fix like all of you, I guess. Okay. I think so. This was back when I was like, well, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get tri res stuff very reliably. No, you can get tri res stuff for so cheap. You can get it reliably. It's not a big deal. I really, really do not find it to be a big deal. Add some evasion of uh, life to that, too. Make that a little bit sexier. Actually, maybe I should just remake the gloves entirely, because I don't know if I've done something stupid with them. This was so long ago, and ten leagues ago, I played this game very differently. Yeah, those are share green gloves and not slink gloves. Why are those not slink gloves? Such a waste. Now yeah, let's call it there. Those are slightly better. Okay, and we have a helmet, but I'm going to replace the helmet too, just in case it's weird too. Don't know what I've done with it, so I want to be careful that it's not just stupid. Is less life somehow. Oh, I just trained life, I guess. It has more evasion, anyways. I mean, uh, this is still just get this gear is only just placeholder, anyways, so. Like, it matters too much. I do want to add some more, like, basic stuff here, though, like some basic uniques that would be more useful. Like, we could add a um, Marlene's Fallacy, for example. And that's, that's 300,000 DPS right there. Just as stats, there's not even an anointment on this. There were anointments in the game when this was made? How did, how did I take on Uber Elder with this build? 
I, I was not as good at the game as I am now, that's for sure. Ugh. <sighs> Okay. I mean, we can grab a nice sexy little enlightenment too. What are we at for charges? We're at four and five. We could grab overcharge from the Templar area. 127,000. Pretty nice. Are we anything better than 127,000? Our plan's 168, 34. This gives us more throwing speed. Is that based on more than overcharge or where's overcharge? Oh wow, it's all the way down there. I would have expected that to be a bit higher. Ideally, I want to keep golden oils out of the anointments. Though I could also add Divine Judgment as like the main one, and then you can swap up to the Heart of Flame. Like, I am kind of, like, floating around with the uh, destructive apparatus thing right now, because one thing I have definitely noticed is that the amount of time it takes for you to throw a mine is really, it's a really big deal, because that is how much time you are locked in place and not able to run away from something. So, if you are really good at positioning, you don't really need a whole lot of th mine throwing speed, but if you're a normal, uh, normal human being, you need a lot of mine throwing speed to, like, be able to avoid things that you, because you can't see the future. <laughs> so destructive apparatus would actually be a kind of good pick there. Even though the other ones will do more damage. Savagery is really good, though. Savagery, that should be down the duelist area. That's why we don't have it. I mean, Heart of Flame is probably going to be better than Destructive Apparatus, just because it's an extra 100,000 DPS, but it's more expensive. So I'm going to say first pick is probably Destructive Apparatus, and then Heart of Flame would be the better option. We will also eventually have to be mindful of our corruptions. Because there are a lot of corruptions we could do. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Max Frenzy Charges. Spell Crit. Curse on Hit. Ugh, so good. Hmm. The problem is the curse on hits are only level one. I know this is kind of makes me kind of weird, but I genuinely do not mind self casting curses. Like I don't think it's too big of a problem. It matters more when you're using like a hex blast build where you need to curse before you could hit anything. But in a build where it's like you have enough damage, it's just you can just curse the things that are actually dangerous. Then, eh. That would be the sexy version, is with the front max frenzy charges. Okay, time to start splitting gear. Advanced gloves, corruption, max frenzy charges. I'm going to decrease the. Expectation for distances down to 90% because of the corruption specifically. 
because that increases the price, having a try resist to begin with. So those are the advanced gloves. These will be the basic ones. This will be the basic set, basic gear. Then we are going to add an advanced gear. Wait, no. no, 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 not that. Copy, make it advanced gear. There we go. Okay, advanced gear. Advanced gloves. Basic gloves. That'll be... That Marlene's is going to be in the basic gear. And then we're going to add a secondary Marlene's with Heart of Fire. Not Gert. Gert of Fire! Or Flame. That will be in the advanced gear section. Okay, swapping back... A basic helmet here. We're going to split this as well. Advanced helmet. Drop the expectancy to 30. And we are going to corrupt it to have. Ooh, actually, so this is always the question Do we want a power charge corruption? Do we want a cost multiplier corruption? Or do we want to add uh, Xarch and Eater implicits? So 117,000 is the number of each. Okay, so 84,000 for the basic one. I usually go by what the basic one is. Damage per, per power charge, 77. Strike chance, 53. Fire damage, 58. Okay. So if we add this, just on its own, it'll give 84,000, so we, all we need to do is make up... Oh, plus 387, plus 30, 117. Okay, so we need to make up 33,000 more in the Eater to be on par with the Power Charge. But also, it is worth considering that the Power Charges are going to be more expensive, versus this, you can just edit as much as you want. Well, it's seventy three right there, so that's that's. I think we're I think we're done. <laughs> Ooh, plus mana regen. That's always a thing. Uh, that's three mana regen. That's not good. Mana reservation efficiency for an extra five percent. That is good. Ooh, pen for 110. Sexy. That is good. Oh, it's, so it's going to be between Fire Pen and Mana Res. Uh, it's 3% for the basic Mana Res, and it's 110. Yeah. If we need the, the Mana Res, we'll, we'll deal with it then. Now... That. Also, we don't need to lower the 
mounts because you can just add uh, either implicits to anything. You can just add uh, um, in the influenced implicits from the Eldritch implicits. You can just add the Eldritch implicits to anything, so you don't have to worry about get it, like trying to save money by decreasing the stats of your your gear so that you can find something with a decent implicit. Okay. What are we set? Uh, okay, I, sh I was gonna check the prices, like what price we're setting at, but that I shouldn't do that because the tactician is. I don't think it exists anymore. Yeah, it doesn't exist. Uh, what were their names? The tactician, the magnate, and. Yeah, the magnate still exists. Is the other tactician and the other one no longer exist? Okay, so that's not incredibly good because we don't have the double damage. Just out of curiosity, we're at 89. Let's say we just add, happen to add, like... Let me add just just to try this out. Add two hundred health there. So if we can manage to get the strength more strength up to two hundred, we can get three hundred thousand off of the magnate. And then I assume about the same amount for upgrading further. Actually, let's try it. Three fifty. No? No. I don't think that's enough is the problem. Try it again. 400 to 400. Okay. Yeah, so it just doubles it. Okay. Yeah, so we can get a chunk more if we up our strength. And I mean, that's not too, too hard, I don't think, considering that we have two rings that have nothing on them right now, effectively. They're kind of just duds. Okay. I'm drinking. You know, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna delete my rings. Okay, so it's fifty thousand damage for the implicit on the diamond. That's not enough. That's... 50,000 is not enough for me to give up an, a ring implicit. No, we're going to pick something different, because that's not acceptable. We can probably do just a basic life ring. That would probably work. Because... 25 life. Which is 25 life? Oh. That's effectively 57 life. That 57 life is more important than 50,000 DPS. Okay, so I'll give 200 in total. We are going to snag. Uh, well, actually, I mean, technically, technically, we could just do all res. And that brings us up to 70. And we just get a second one, it brings us up to whatever that is. 85. Which puts us in range... 
So that should we should be able to withstand elemental weakness from level from low tier maps then? Nope, not even that. No, and we can't withstand any elemental weakness then. That's not enough. Not enough uh resistances. I mean, the other option is, like, we're not even using the resist- we're not even really re using our suffixes right now. Alright, fire and cold, uh... Then I guess I'll just do lightning and chaos. You know, basics. What does that make us withstand? Okay, we can now withstand white maps. Elemental weakness, that's about it, though. Yellow maps will bring us down to 73%, and red maps will bring us down to 69%. It's a bit low for my liking. Hmm. You hit recently, yes. Wait, no. Do I hit? No, my mind's hit. Right. Right, which is why I don't take reflected damage, because my minds take reflected damage, but my minds don't take damage. Okay, had to work that through in my head. Hmm. I kind of don't want to put the Magnate here, I admit. It's kind of dangerous to do that, because the Magnate is an expensive belt these days. Used to not be, but it is now. If there's a basic starter life belt that would probably do us better. I think. I mean, that now makes us able to withstand any and all elemental curses. Plus, our life is still trash, so there's that. Don't like our evasion rating right now, but I don't think there's much we can do about that. I think I'm going to add a basic lust to max life here to just give us a little bit of extra push. Tanker, or didn't even drop us a percent. They give us a little of pu a push. That's good. And then. Ninety is the highest you or oh ninety nine is the highest you can get. So I'm gonna say eighty to be realistic about this. Why did I... Oh, my my strength tanked because I took off the Magnate, that's why. I was wondering what was going on. Okay, well, we now have a new problem, then. And it's not even in, in range to use Physique, either. Because that's only going to bring me up to 144, which will be, still be 11 short. Unless I want to go... I mean, I can make up 11 points, kinda. I mean, that's 10 points. Well, that's 11 points right there, technically. That's enough that I can bring it up with Zeke, but it's still too low. There's another issue with using Marlene's, is that amulets are a good place to get stats, and we're all... Uh, that all we're getting is int. We need more than just int. Could be time to remove the Aziri step. We don't really need spell suppression and spell dodge, do we? They kind of conflict with each other. 
Because if you dodge a spell, then your suppression won't work. If you suppress a spell, then dodging it's kind of pointless. I don't know if there's, like, other boots that would be better for us. Let's see armor-wise. Uh, Rapith. Yeah, I don't really want to sacrifice 10% of my life when I use a trigger a spell skill. And I'm pretty sure that mines are... I think you throwing a mine is using a spell skill. I mean, spell damage boosts them. It must be. It would be taking about 400 damage. Or I'd be sacrificing what 400 life per hit. That's a lot. Hmm. We could swap in the tenure and then make the boots into just stat boots. There's also the Legacy of Fury for scorching things, but they have to be nearby. I don't know what the distance for Legacy of Fury is. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you tell us what the radius is? Wait, this is interesting. This something changed. It used to be that Legacy of Fury dropped scorched ground. Nearby enemies are scorched is much better than scorched ground. Oh, the radius of the scorched ore is 30 units. Okay. That answers the question. Okay, so for units, the best way to tell that is 30 units should be about 3 meters. So you're seeing what 2.6 meters there, so you need to be relatively close to something, kind of nearish it. So if you're willing to run past things, or like get in the thick of it with bosses, then Legacy of Fury is not unreasonable. Plus, burning nearby things for a percent of their life gives you extra clear. 30% chance to ends when you kill a scorched enemy to burn each surrounding enemy for 4 seconds, dealing 8% of the enemies, the killed enemy's life as fire damage per second. I mean, the benefit of that is that if a boss has 8 adds around it, and you kill all of them, and let's say two of them proc this. So, the boss will get hit for 8% of life, or 16% of the life, uh, combined life of the two adds near it over per second for four seconds, which goes up to 64% of their life total. Which is pretty nice. That it would help with clearing packs, especially when you're up against bulkier rares. Especially if you run, run up against the fire and ignite resistant ones. That would help. The only problem is that Legacy of Fury is from the Maven. So that means that you'll have to wait a moment before that actually becomes available to you. I think that's a better fit for the, like, advanced version of the build. I think you'd be better to pull out the uh, Dodra's Tenure for this, because Dodra's Tenure, you could just get that as a drop. You don't even necessarily need to buy that, because it's such a cheap and basic unique. Like, you can get it in level 12 areas, as you can see by the required level 12. Plus, the reduced cast speed doesn't really affect you, I don't think. 
Yeah, it doesn't look like it affect, affects you in any way. You do lose life. Because the slink gloves have better life on them. And you do lose evasion, which is bad. But we're just going to be moving that over to evasion boots. Okay. Fire. Cold. Lightning. No plus chaos. Lightning. Okay. Basic boots. Boots. Basic boots. Okay. We're at 3876 right now. Swap these. Brings up to 30, spread down to 3700. So we lost, lost about 180 doing that. Sucks. I mean, we're not going to find, like 65 is pretty decent on, a, on boots in my opinion. Like it does go up to 99 as well, but like, wait, is it? Am I crazy? It goes up to 89. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to find that because you're going to be looking for 30% movement speed and not all the 30% movement speed does that. Why we need to make movement speed inherent instead of putting it on boots and predict it off all the boots. That would help. Okay, so that helps. Plus, since the Doger's tenure is so common, it's so much easier to get good corruptions on it. So... You want spell crit, you want max frenzy charges, way easier. I will put that in the basic version of the build. It's 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 cheap enough to, to qualify for that. Okay. Why does that tank my health so much? Oh, because I'm still using the tactician there. That's the problem. Get rid of that, seeing as that doesn't exist. Advanced gloves and basic boots. Hmm. Oops, one moment. Okay. That pupper needed something. Okay, so fortunately the advanced version now has like no health. <laughs> That's not acceptable. I'm gonna axe the advanced gloves. Put the basic ones back. That's better. Why is it so much better to be? What did I? What did I swap that made their the health just awful? Oh, magnet.
Okay, so now about 3,700 heaps. That's good. Hmm. The advanced gear now decreases your DPS. Hmm. Maybe we shouldn't do that. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to say fuck that. Wait, no. We're going to say fuck that. We're going to do that. Nice. Much better. Okay, so... Basic boots. We're going to leave the basic gloves for now. Not going to use the Legacy of Fury. Just because it's going to tank our damage too much. And we're going to copy the basic boots now. We are going to make special boots. Okay, advanced boots. Advanced boots have more power. Okay, what do we want to add to this? Because we're probably going to want to add some sort of something. We do have the ability to add extra resistances, which is always good. We have the ability to add 5% more speed. Always nice. We have some avoidances, which are good. Hmm. There's always action speed, which is fucking amazing. 160,000. Don't really care about dropping ground, it's not really worth it. It'll be either be action speed or chaos res, because our chaos res is, res is currently trash. Let's just leave it as chaos res for a second. Okay, let's see what the Eater has for us. We get another 40 life, life regen. Wait, so you can get avoid elemental ailments on Eater, and you can get avoid, uh, avoid being frozen on Searing? So you can more or less, you can mostly avoid getting frozen just by doing that. Hmm. Very interesting. War cries, bleed avoidance. Either life regen or elemental avoidance. Nineteen percent is eh. Hmm. I don't know if nine percent chaos res is worth the potential action speed that we could have instead. I mean, that puts us up at nearly 4.4 million. Which is pretty good for a build this cheap. As we're looking at some, like, basic... Basic rare items for the most part. Most expensive part of this build is the six-link Vitarios. But you could... You know what? I have an idea. In the basic version of the build, we're going to put Shroud of the Lightless, because it's easier to get a Shroud of the Lightless and 5-link it than it is to get a Victarious Influence and 6-link it. So in the advanced build, we will have a Victarious Influence instead. That'll be cheaper. We have Dorian's Catalysts up there, because they're generally cheap.
Dark Seer. Those have to be young. Uh, Dark Seer. Dark Seer. <laughs> I'm not... Not familiar with Dark Seer, I admit. I know this got changed, this league. I don't know how valuable that's going to be. I mean, the Dorianis is just from Etsy, normal Etsyri. Well, that's pretty simple. Plus, it has Elemental Leech. Like, Dorianis is just good on its own. Don't really want to rely on hindered enemies. Unless you can hinder from a distance, and we can't currently do that. Let's just rely on Doriana's Catalyst to start with, because it just tends to be good. They're usually... Like, usually good at Doriana's Catalyst for like 5 or 10c at most. Even like fairly early on. That won't be a problem. The Dodri's Tenure will cost basically nothing to get. The Marlene's Fallacy will cost basically nothing to get. The uh, Silver Oil for Destructive Apparatus will be a little bit annoying, but, like, probably not more than 40c. The Shroud of the Lightless on its own, like, no links, is probably going to be, like, 50c. I already guess. I mean, obviously, all of these prices are just complete guesses, because we have no idea what the economy is going to be like this league. Like, last league, our economy got, like, completely destroyed because of the rarity shit that happened with Affliction. So, or at least the unique economy got destroyed, so it's pretty hard to say what things are going to be like. I don't like how low our life is. Our life sucks. 3600 is not acceptable. Hmm. We could run over and get melding. Would you give us 257 more life, but it costs us 7 points to do it. Hmm. I promise melding is not very good in general. Like, these are subpar max life rolls, at best. Terrible at worst. I think we need to grab the life here. To make it a little bit better. It's only 3800, that's not good. 3800 is not acceptable. I, I'm nervous when I have a character that is below 4,000 life, usually, if it's a life build. And usually I'm nervous if I have a energy shield character that's below 5,000. Like at that point, it just becomes... They're in a lot of danger at that point. I still have three dual sockets that nothing are in right now. I could remove that. Wait, hold on. There's other weird stuff in here. We could add more evasion rating based on our intelligence, but we don't have very much. Vision running on the energy shield recharge, eh. Don't like those. Vision running while you have energy shield, we can't reliably say we will. I'm going to kill off the evasion energy shield there. Because I think it's time we go look at our gems. Because I think there's some things we need to change. First of all, 
scared of that. Uh, what should I use to dis to show automation? I use trauma support. It's not a red gem. I think automation is a red gem. Still scan, uh, and then increase duration. Uh, it'll be fine. We're going to take the ores out of here. Put them in the helmet. I generally like putting ores in the helmet because it's very easy to get a craft for plus two to level of AoE gems for the helmet, and ores are AoE gems generally. Okay, Herald of Ash and Skater Bots. Okay, travel. Doing Flame Dash, because we are not dealing with the bullshit that comes with Smokevine, Faster Casting, Portal. Okay, none of this shit. Curse. We are going to have... Hmm. Probably going to use Elemental Weakness. The other option is that we pick Assassin's Mark. Wait, whoa, whoa hold on. Sniper's Mark. Can Sniper's Mark do does projectile hit? These are projectiles. So, first of all, okay. 1.2 million for Elemental Weakness, 800,000 for Assassin's Mark, 900,000 for Sniper's Mark. Sniper's Mark allows for splitting. Don't know if... I imagine the projectiles can split. That's not too bad, but it's not going to really help our damage very much. Assassin's Mark has the benefit of giving us more life when we kill things, but we're not going to be killing... Like, if you were marking something, it's probably going to be something dangerous, so it's probably going to take a while to kill it anyways. That's not really reliable. We don't need the power charges, because we're already getting power charges through uh, Charge Mine support. So it's probably going to be Elemental Weakness, just based on this. The other option is Slammability. Slammability is slightly better. It gives a higher ignite chance. I don't know if ignite matters to me. Ignite matter to me. I don't know if anything. I don't know if anything rolls based on ignite that we have. Anything here use ignite? Yes, snowforge uses ignite. So that actually does benefit us. And yep, okay, it's just snowforge then. What's our Ignite chance currently? 50%. Okay, so it brings us up to 75%. That's actually a notable benefit. Okay, so. Ability. Faster casting. We might as well throw Ball of Righteous Fire in here. What's Arcane Devotion do? The difference. Well, I'm not using the basic Righteous Fire anyways, so... It doesn't really matter now, does it? I would only be using this. Okay. So when I turn on Ball Righteous Fire, we get about... 850,000. That's not bad. Yeah, so we're 4.5 million right now. That's pretty good for a budget build. That's, that's on our advanced gear. 
still our our advanced gear isn't that much more expensive than our normal gear, so it's not that big a difference. Oh wow, hold on a second. Flammability beat elemental weakness with elemental weakness curse effect. That means if we put flammability curse effect. Hundred eleven thousand more. There we go. Four point six. That's pretty fucking good. We also have the uh, big, big boost that we can get too that I haven't added to this yet. This is not cheap. This is not a cheap option. What I'm going to show you, but you can get a plus five uh, Victarios. So we can pick. A lot of different things. Uh, either you can have plus two to trap and mine and AoE, plus two to aura and AoE. Uh, aura and AoE is going to be the most expensive, so probably trap and mine and AoE, or trap... Actually, no. Plus two to aura and plus two to trap and mine is probably going to be the cheapest. Just because those go the least together. So just that on the on its own, if we add that to the build, is another 2.3 million. Which is how I get a lot of my builds over 10 million, is by making, like, picking up, like, super armor like this, super body armors. It genuinely is, like, a quarter, I mean, as you can see right here, it's a quarter of the 10 million mark. That is not for cheap. That, that is not, that is not cheap, but it is something. A very good something is what it is. Okay, let's. I want to just really glance really quickly at something else that we have access to now. So, the Dodri's tenure. It's going to be very hard to replace that. That is, that is a nearly one million damage piece of gear right there with the uh, frenzy charge about bonus on it. But, but. If we make this, these gloves, into Steering X-Arch and Eater, some of the most offensive bonuses are found on gloves, glove implicit specifically for Eldritch gloves. It's where you'll get your things like Intimidate, Unnerve, uh, Exposure, Attack Speed, Cast Speed, etc. Let's see, what can we get here? Let's see, where are you? I know you're here. Well, there's a nerve. Oh, a nerve isn't counted. Right. Okay, that's not in the... That's not set up. Oh, shit, 176,000 from mine throwing speed. That's nice. Let's see... 114,000 from Frenzy Charges. Wish Ash Buff Effect, not worth it. Top Multi. I think with this, it's probably a Nerve. Or it's... A nerve or mind throwing speed. That's one seventy six. Let's see what adding mind adding a nerve does. It's just shy of four hundred thousand DPS difference if a nerve takes effect. And honestly, I would be willing to bet on on nerve specifically with this. Uh, so it's only a 15% chance, and, like, you can roll for 20. That's probably going to be worth it. It's not so expensive to get the level 2 embers as it is to go from 2 to 3. So that's 20% chance. Think of it this way, though. If you throw 5 mines per throw, each mine explodes and creates 4 projectiles. That's 20 projectiles. That means, theoretically, that if... 
just a quarter of those projectiles hit something, that it will be unnerved, like, on average, like, statistically, it will be unnerved by that. If you throw two batches, on average, you only need to get 5 of 40 projectiles to hit. It's a pretty good deal. Plus, it's almost double the mine throwing speed. Again, mine throwing speed does have a benefit of it will always be working no matter what. Uh, a nerve requires you to have to hit something at least twice. Because the first hit is going to apply the unnerve, the second hit is going to be to use the unnerve. Or, should not, should, should, shouldn't say hit. I should say the first set of mines probably is not going to benefit from the unnerve, but the second set will. So that's generally only when you're dealing with much, much harder content that unnerve will matter, but it will help scale up better than if you were just to go with the mine throwing speed. Though the mine throwing speed does make you a bit more versatile because you can run around a lot more, even though it is only 8%. Also, there's something else that we haven't even looked at. We can add... Do 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 whoop fire exposure That is three hundred and twenty four thousand DPS on its own. So that's three hundred twenty four thousand. Plus, we have the unnerve, which is 400,000. So this bring, that brings it down to an average of about, let's say, 250,000 less than the amount that you would get from having the Dodres. But you also get to have resistances and life and evasion rating, which you get, you get basically nothing from the Dodres except for extra evasion. Or sorry, extra intelligence. You get reduced cast speed... It's, it's basically just damage and int. You don't even get energy shield, because it's only 16 energy shield, which is nothing. It only works up to 43 energy shield total, and that's... Eh. Plus, plus, we're going to mix this up a bit. So, we're at 4.6 million right now. We're going to add this. We're going to add a nerve. 4.3. Still down by 300,000. But, but, there is one other thing that we ignored earlier, because we didn't need it at the time. That adds another 200,000 right there. Bringing it... About, let's say, 70,000 shy of the mark that you were at before with Dodra's tenure. But now you have a lot of extra life, and you have lots of resistances, and you have a lot of other shit that you could not actually use before. Which is important. There's also another bullshit thing that I'm thinking of right now that I don't know if I... I don't know if it's a good idea. <laughs> uh, but if, let's say... Let's say we wanted to get... We just... Uh, yeah, that's fine. We're, we're good with what we have here. And we'll add a little bit more evasion rating. Sure. Let's say that that's about that. Yeah, that's fine. Let's say we don't need this lightning res. Add modifier. Custom. Okay. Let me see if I can write the syntax without looking at the actual syntax. France level 20 aspect of the... Cat? I think. Would, would it be cat? Boop. Okay, so that dropped us below the amount of mana we can have. does give us... No, it's not Aspect of the Cat we need. It's, uh... This cat... I, uh, I, need to, I need to look it up again. I can never remember exactly what all the aspects are. And there is a bit of a difference.
Okay, so... Aspect of the Cat swaps between Cat Stealth and Cat's Agility. Cat Stealth increases your crit chance, uh, gives you a bit of stealth, and gives you 15% damage avoidance. Cat's Agility, which is the longer one, it's the 6 of the, of the 10 seconds, uh, gives you attack and cast speed. So in general, it, it's good. Crit chance is nice, too. Especially considering we have 600,000 crit multi. But that only gives us about 300,000 health. So let's look at the other aspects, because Aspect of the Spider and Aspect of the Avian are more likely to be the ones that we want. Uh, I usually default to Spider, because Spider tends to be very good. Just, if something's nearby, every second it applies a 5% increased damage taken modifier up to tr three times, and it reduces their movement speed. Which is really nice. Wait, it, hold on a second, it hinders things? It hinders things. Oh, it's a 30% reduction. That's nice. Uh, what is, how big is the aura for Aspect of the Spider? It's pretty big. I don't know if we have math on it, though, right now. Or at least not readily accessible math. Plus, you can also take some of the spider stuff if you want it. That is another option. Uh, so you can flick them up to four times. That's good. Plus, it gives chaos res. ES for each enemy you hit, which is affected by a spider's web. Uh, pretty decent. You could also pick up the chest plate, but I don't think that's a good idea. The gloves are usually the punchy one, but I don't know if that's going to be worth it. So we could try Phenomus's Weave and see how the damage compares. Because this also has life on it and evasion writing. So this actually is not like a bad pick for as far as things go. So we found Mrs. Weave. So that sits at 575,000 there. Is it because we don't have things set up? Okay, well, this is going to tank a few things, but that's okay. Tank a few things. Our, our mana reservation is still fucked, but we can always figure that out later. Okay, so we don't have the damage yet because we need to add spiderweb stacks, so... One second, two second, three second. Once it hits max stacks, it does even better. That is 306, that's about 370,000 damage. It's not bad compared to Dodger's Tenure, which apparently is 800,000 better. But one of the benefits of unique items is that it's quite easy to get things like max frenzy charges on them. Yay! So, technically, we have a nice little middle ground between our advanced gloves and our Dodra's tenure now. The advanced gloves are still better, because the difference between these two... Wait. We want Aspect of the Spider on this. Either way, we're going to want Aspect of the Spider. Oh, and that's going to change... That's going to affect the damage, because part of the reason why Phenomus' Weave was, is as good as it is is because it has Aspect of the Spider on it natively. Okay, so Dodger's Tenure would be 345,000 more... 
and advanced gloves would be 183,000 less, but a nerve will give us about 400,000, so we're sitting at about 200,000 more. But this can have as much life on it as we want, versus the weave, which cannot. It just has the life that it has. So this does give us more frenzy charges. This will give us more evasion and more resistances, so this is still better than the weave. Came pretty damn close, though. The weave is like a good, a good part waypoint, but... Eh. It's pretty easy to add Elders and Blissets, though, so that is a thing. I forgot to swap back. It's always hard to swap between the two of them. Okay, so for the things that I showed but didn't show accidentally was I was just checking out the different gloves here. Yeah, so Venomous's Weave is supposed to be 183,000 more and Dojo's Tenure is supposed to be 500,000 more. But if we consider the, the 380,000 from the Nerve, it's, it's better. Uh, this is still technically more damage, so we're still going to have about 100,000 more damage if you go Dodri's Tenure instead of going for the Advanced Gloves. But you lose 4% Evasion Rating, you lose 2 Resistances, you lose 40 Energy Shield, 1% Reserved Mana, and 200 Life. Which is a lot. And I don't really want to lose life. 4,000 is good when we're sitting at, like, we have 57% chance to evade, which is eh. We have a bit of block, a lot of spells, suppression, and we're capped on resistances. Our chaos res is ass, though. Our region's decent, but our ES is not very good, so it's purely on life. We are currently regenerating about 10% of our life per second. That's not bad. That's actually really good. We still have the issue of our strength is still too low. So, that is something worth noting. Okay, that's all reservation efficiency stuff. We can't, can't rid of that. Absolutely cannot. Okay, so we can either have the reduced damage applied, or we could have another 500,000 from War Effect. What do I pick here? That's mine damage, and that's the movement one. Okay, so I can't switch either of those for anything. Hmm, it's always hard to pick between these two, because these are the two I always end up picking between. I'm going to go for the aura effect, bringing us up to 5.5 .5 million. Okay. It is time to do some math. So this is 340,000 plus 6% movement speed. Divided by 4, so this is getting me about 85,000 per point. This is going to be getting me about 120,000 per point. This is getting me like 210,000 per point. 200,000 per point. Hundred ninety five thousand per point. Hundred twenty oh, hundred twenty one thousand right there, just for that single point. I should be keeping that in mind then. I do need to cut something right now. Like I'm I'm over. How much are these? These are eighty seven thousand apiece. A hundred thousand right there, too. Uh, the simplest method would be to jump over here. That will cut things off. Uh, so we have. Okay, so that the three will replace 
So we just lost... Oh, how much was that? I didn't even properly register that. 5.5 down to 5.1 right there. But we saved two more extra points doing that. So we lost about 200,000 per point. That's actually not acceptable. That is a problem. Okay. Oh, that's a five right there. Do you need better than that? No, probably not. Actually, I do really need the evasion rating, like, really badly. Plus, we have more evasion rating stuff down here. We could have more spell suppression. We don't really need it, though. Spell suppression of helmet, boots, and gloves. Oh, helmet, boots, gloves, and body armor, all of evasion. You can also have increased movement speed if you haven't taken damage recently, just for, like, quick movement around the map. That's always nice. Especially if you're, like, playing really well, then you can just keep that buff up for a while. Plus, can't be stunned if you haven't been hit recently is really good with evasion builds. There's a lot of good options here. I'm kind of wondering, are we going to be swapping out evasion on any of this stuff? Like, will that stay true? We'll always have evasion. Okay, yeah, I lost evasion on something. What did I lose evasion on? Oh, I lost evasion on Dodrace. That's why. Because if we can have 15% here, that this is my thought. If we can have 15% here, we could potentially just cut off this thing entirely here. We could uh, dump that. This, we dump the phasing. Cut off that. Spell suppression is lucky. Spell suppression based on that. We're sitting at 86% spell suppression. And that saved us... Three points? It was three points doing that. And we lost four percent. We lost four percent spell suppression up to a maximum of twelve percent spell suppression plus a chance to phase. But we can also add quartz flask for phasing, so that's not necessarily required. Oh, X Frosted, thank you so much for following. Welcome to the channel. Glad to know people are enjoying my ranting about Path of Exile. <laughs> uh, how are you today? So I can see if there's anything else weird around here that I can. Pull. I'm not. I'm not spell dodging. That's not happening. There's one other thing that's floating around in my head right now, and it's that I've been wondering about axing the Herald of Ash here. Actually, my idea would require me to axe both the Herald of Ash and the uh, Aspect of the Spider, but I kind of want to add grace to this so we can bring our evasion chance up, because 57% is bad. That also brings us back into the range, an acceptable range of uh, mana reservation. Only problem is actually being able to throw mines regularly, because it'll take a full second between mine throws right now, with only 22 mana. Which is a problem. How much did I sack for that? I sacked 500,000. No, I sacked 500,000 plus whatever this was, another 500,000. So I sacked a million DPS for how much evasion rating? Twenty-two percent evasion rating. Yeah. 
You know what? That doesn't bother me. It really doesn't, because... You know what's the... You know what's the best way to deal... <laughs> if you die, you your DPS goes to zero no matter what. So, <laughs> it kind of you kind of need to have kind of need to be alive for that. So, the having an extra million DPS while alive only matters if you're alive, which kind of makes me want to go for a race, just because it's it's worth it. Plus, it also means that we get another another suffix back here, and then we can go back to having uh, lightning res. Or we can pick up Chaos Res, because otherwise we're kind of suffering. Yay, Chaos Res. Uh, hmm. We can also do is swap this to all Res. And swap to Chaos Res. This will bring us all to an even 50% over, so we'll still be able to withstand all levels of elemental weakness. Plus, we now have some Chaos Res on us. We still have our belt here. Also, we haven't touched our flasks yet. This is all just, like, random crap. But I would not usually use anymore. Not like this. I, I would not put freeze immunity on a diamond flask. That's not useful. Because, also, uh, just so the Brian King can't be frozen anymore. Goodbye. <laughs> Solution found. Uh, what is it doing? Oh yeah, flasks. My flasks are trapped. Or trapped right now. I don't even know if these flasks can, like, exist in this current form anymore anyways. <laughs> yeah, that, those are not good. Okay. Flasks all go away now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Okay. Life. Let's remake this. Uh, this is a high crit build, so flash charge on crit, as always. Had a 30% once, and it's reasonable. Corrupted blood. Corrupted blood, okay. Move that up to surgeons. Okay, we are going to take our eternal... Uh, no. I don't know. Take our Eternal Mana... Eternal Mana Flask of Enduring, because that's the only Mana Flask anyone uses. Well, no. Some people use other things, but... Most people use Enduring. For a reason. Especially, like, when you have this little mana to work with. Uh, the mana cost of skills I would love to take, but that has been removed. This update, to the best of my knowledge... We could pick Hinder if not on full mana, but because we'll never be on full mana, but we're also hindering things. No, we're not hindering things through uh, Aspect of the Spider because we don't have Aspect of the Spider anymore, so Hinder. Cool. Let's actually look at some utility flasks. Floris, Floris, Floris. Okay. Well, we're going to want a Diamond Flask probably. 200,000 or 260 for sulfur. If I have a choice, it might be better to go sulfur than diamond. Because of the consecrated ground. Nope, nope, that's wrong. That is wrong because I need higher crit, as high crit chance as I can because the higher the crit chance on my flasks, the more I can use my flasks because of surgeons. Okay. What else should I throw at this problem? Usually I would put Crit Strike on here. That is always an option. Crit Strike or Cast Speed. I don't need Cast Speed for this build because it's a mine build. So... 
remember, am I going to bait... Can I spell leech? I don't think so. I'm not dealing spell damage. So, either I can add evasion rating, which is always nice. Because if we're going to go for... Uh, when you hit a rare enemy, then... It's cut like it's good to know that I'm going to have damage, but then again, like I like kind of like mixing up the damage and defense flasks. I find that it has some nice little mix mixed things in there when I do that. Oh, oh, but this is a life build. This is a life build. Right, this is a life build. Okay, which means that I can do something fun. I'm going to save this just with a just with a critical strike. Cool, cool. Okay, Jade. Jade and evasion rating. Okay. Cool. So funny thing about uh uh what are they called? Um about ES builds, which I've been playing a lot of is that they don't have access to one of the flask enchantments because they can't use it. Specifically, take a savage hit. So a savage hit is something that is not explained basically anywhere except for the wiki. So let me explain it to you, because it's actually really important. A savage hit is when you take 10% or more of your health in damage in one hit. So if I take more than 400 damage in one hit, well, think about it. How much, how often do you get hit from more than 400 damage in the end game? Like more than 10% of your health. Enough. More than enough. Like that's actually really easy to proc. So with this, I can go up an extra 5% to evasion chance. That's perfectly fine. Uh, the other option is I can put movement speed on there so I can reposition better. But that's not reliable movement speed because. I mean, we kind of want our movement speed to pop up more often than that, if we're going to have movement speed on things. I'll just put evasion on there for now. Then our final flask, we could add a sulfur, but I'm not going to add a sulfur because I don't care about the damage. Because, as I've said many, many times, you cannot deal damage when you're dead. Oh yeah, spell suppression. I forgot to say spell suppression on it. That's useful. Okay, go surgeons as always. Since this is a crit build, we are going to put movement speed on this. This is going to get used when we're full. When charge is full. So we have our quartz flask, which gives us phasing, which is like the most important part of this buff, so that we'll be able to run around a lot without uh, having any issues with running into mobs. Great, we're going to flame dash, so we'll be able to get around a lot anyways, so it's not going to be too bad, big a deal, but it is worth considering. Uh, it'll give us a bit of extra spell suppression, and it'll give us a bit of extra open speed on and off, so this will just be a good flask to have, plus we'll be filling it up pretty fast, fast with our crit chance. So, since we have a 30% chance, let's say we have about a 33% chance to crit. We have a little less than that, but let's say we have 33% chance. And let's say we have a 33% chance to gain a charge on a crit. So that would be, I believe, a 10% chance per attack, because 33 divided by 3 is 11%. That's 11%. Let's say we got about... Let's, let's well, round it down. We'll, we'll round it down to 10. So about every 10 attacks... For every 10 crits, and every projectile crits independently, and we have 20 projectiles per uh, per throw, that means that if all 20 projectiles hit, and they do seek, so their likelihood of them all hitting something is pretty strong, we will gain two flash charges on every flash that we have, multiplied by our flash charges gained modifiers. Which is good. And if we can recharge up to... We need to regain 30 charges to be able to keep up with the Quartz Flasks. 
And we need to be able to gain that in seven seconds if we want to have it permanently up. So that's probably not going to happen, honestly. Not unless I pull some bullshit, like with the trader. No, that won't work. We have too many flasks for the trader. That's only that's a one or two flask thing. We could grab the Ranger slash Shadows flask node, the uh, care careful con conservationist. I mean, this one's pretty good because if you dealt a critical strike recently, and yes, we will have dealt a critical strike within the last four seconds, pretty much always. We'll be gaining 20% increased flask charges. Plus 10% on each of these, so it's 40% increased gained. And 10% reduced used, plus 5% increased effect. So that is a pretty fucking good pick, and we probably should pick that, so that we are less in danger. Uh, I'm going to start axing gem sockets, I think. Uh, plus, we have some extra things here. Enemies that you kill that are affected by elemental ailments grab grant 100% increased flash charges. That is not really uh, useful in boss fights, but it is useful when mapping because we will always be affecting something with elemental ailments because we have 75% chance to ignite, or well, we have 50% chance to ignite on average, plus on bosses or anything we decide to curse, it will be a 75% chance. You can also just get an extra 25% chance on every single flask to gain a flask charge when you crit, which honestly is what we're going to do. So that's that. <laughs> that will help us maintain our flask charges. So at maximum, if you get a full 35% max rolled surgeon flask, that's 35%. That'll bring us up to a 60% chance on every single crit to give you a flask charge. Uh, let's say 55%, because realistically, I don't want to fuck around with trying to get a 35% surgeons when I can just get a 30% surgeons. It's uh, a few extra percents, not that big a deal. I mean, it can save you, but like, who the fuck wants to run around looking for that? Oh, I could also grab like replenishing presence down here and get some extra flash charges going, but that's extra 25%. I mean, that would mean my flask would never end, which would be nice. Very nice, but I don't know. I'm going to hold off on that for now. Also, I'm going to chop this. What's my movement speed? My movement speed is 36%. Uh... The other option is we swap the Quartz Flask for a Jade. Or not Jade, uh, Quicksilver. I mean, I feel like most people will swap my Quartz Flask out for a Quicksilver if I, when I post this build anyways, so... Eh, it's probably fair to do it. Movement speed. Uh, 10%, let's say. Well, there we go. Oh yeah, I forgot there's also this stuff. I do love the percent life per second during effect. That one's always really good. Mm, do I want such a sexy thing on something? Probably. I promise you can't, you can only put on utility flasks, you can't put it on either of these. I'd love to have a life flask with extra regen on it. Yummy. Uh, but that's not happening. I mean, something fun you could potentially do is do a regen quicksilver with on savage hit. So anytime you take 10% of your health and damage, you just get like this, you just get shot out of a rocket, basically, so you get to run away. That would be good. That would actually be a really nice backup. And probably worth it, considering we're taking away phasing. 
And we are going to have Flame Dash, so that's always good. We'll be able to run around a lot with our Flame Dash. That shouldn't be a problem. I think our cast time isn't too bad right now. What's our Flame Dash on... What's the cast time for it? It defaults to 0.8 and we're 0.45. Ooh, that's, that's really nice. Mm -hmm. We'll also need to go at some point and look at our... our uh, whatever this stuff is. Support gems. Because we could... Uh, drop hypothermia, actually. Here, I have an idea. Dropping hypothermia. And I'm going to add inspiration. Oh, it's the exact same, plus, it's the exact same except for it, there's better reservation, and, yeah, it's 22 mana cost versus 13 mana cost, that's so much better. Okay, we're probably not going to go back to the old Pyroclast, admittedly. We're gonna do just want to check really quickly so we're at 4.3 million I'm gonna swap over to old pyroclast yeah that's not as good that is just not as good wait that's not right that should be at 10 not 23 okay so that's actually lower so it is much better to go for a Pyroclast of Sabotage, then. Yeah, I'm just going to assume that Sabo is going to be our pick. Okay. We're at 4.3 million, and I've, like, chopped damage... Tw I've chopped off a million DPS from this build still. Just, because, just to get more survivability. So... I think we're doing pretty frickin' good. Ooh, we could also add an extra 1% of range and rating. Yeah, I kind of want to do that, maybe? Oh, no, 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 no. There's something even better we can do. Here's what we can do. Here's what we can do. Uh, boots. We are going to add a level 1 precision aura. And we are going to... Activate Arrogance. So that is going to use up... How much is that reserving? That's going to reserve 44 of our life to do that. And it'll also give us about 100,000 damage, which isn't really much, but that doesn't matter. Because, because, now we have the ability to take... If you... Plus one to all max res if you have reserved life and mana... That's 1% less damage from all elements, then. Which is a nice little trick that you can add, I find. We can also swap out the precision for vitality or clarity if we need a tiny bit more life or we need a tiny bit more mana. Though the amount is so low that I don't know if it would even matter. Wait, can we just pick all of them, actually? <laughs> How much would it cost to pick all of them? Realistically, only, like, 150 health to pick all of them. <laughs> Which isn't bad. Plus, that gives us more auras, so we could pick up on this, which is now 235,000. That is useful. Or... We could swap this out and do life reservation, but that's only 27, so it's not worth it. This is all level 1 stuff. If we pick a Vault Clarity, we can make it so that we, we're not using mana during the Clarity, which would be nice. They're still with the reservation, but it would just be like a nice little extra buff to have at random. 
So what are we getting from this? We get 16 life a second from the Vitality in exchange for 56 life reserved. And we get 5.7 mana regen a second in exchange for 68 life reserved. 56. Worth it? For, even for the extra damage? They're giving 60,000 each because of the uh, bonus here. I mean, I could just put the points elsewhere. Actually, I, I need to take prowess here. <laughs> Oh, I'm low on decks now. No! Fuck. Oh, <laughs> uh, I'm not dexterous enough. FML. Hmm. You know what I think is the best idea? I think the best idea is for us to go to an intermission. We're going to go to an intermission. We'll be back in about five-ish minutes. My pups seem like they need to get out. And then we'll be back and see how this goes. We can try to figure out something a bit better. Uh, I like I do like where we're at right now, but I feel like we can better this somehow. Because, I mean, if we can have a League Starter build that's 5 million DPS, or, like, on a pretty stringent budget, ooh, that is... That is more than good enough for me. That is absolutely amazing. Okay. I'll be back in about five-ish minutes. Please don't go anywhere, because I will be seeing you soon. Hello, hello, everyone. And we're back. So apparently, I've been living under a rock. I wasn't aware of that the new leak started tomorrow. <laughs> I think I missed the leak start, like, the announcement for when it was starting. Uh, admittedly, I haven't been keeping up very well with it, but really, I did expect it to be less sudden. <laughs> Though, I guess they did mention it, and I just didn't see it, so that's a thing, I guess. Whatever. Anyways, hi everyone. 
Looks like we might be streaming tomorrow night, though. <laughs> Just based on that. Uh. Well, I guess we'll have to see how things go. But honestly, I might use this build to league start. Just because it's ready, and I don't have any other builds ready right now. <laughs> Also, Sabo has a lot of cool things you can use, so... Let's see... 80,000... 110,000 each... 100,000 each... 100, 100,000 each... Am I shocking things? How am I shocking things? Oh, the bots. The bots, the bots, the bots, the bots. That's why. Let's see what our bots are doing it. Okay. Wait, I put faster casting up on ability? That's probably not useful. Okay, it's, I mean, it's useful, but like... I think on flammability actually might be better if I have Arcane Surge. Because, like, I'll cast fairly often. And it also will give it a chance to uh, get back some of the mana that I'd otherwise be losing. Yeah, I don't need that because it doesn't deal damage. Hmm. So it costs 65 mana to cast on ability. Yeah, it's 64 right there. This will give 8.4 mana regen a second when it activates. It just occurred to me that I can't actually cast flammability because my mana's too low. <laughs> Shit. That is a problem. I can cast flame dash. Hmm. This is a slight problem, actually. Hmm. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move some stuff around. Okay. Weapon 1. We are automation. Oops. No. What am I saying? Gloves. Gloves. I almost typed gloves. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, okay, here's what I'm thinking. Remove portal. I'm gonna add Arcane Surge. No, I'm not gonna add Arcane Surge. I'm gonna add Inspiration. Reduce the cost of Flame Dash. And I'm going to add... Flammability. And that'll reduce the cost of Flammability as well. Okay, so that's 19 to cast Flame Dash. It's 41 to cast Flame Ability. Meaning I often will not be able to cast Flame Ability unless I'm at max. Mm. My mana regen is a problem. How much mana regen do I get per level? 
on this. Oh, that jumped to 11. Oh, the mana regen on this per level is, like, crazy, actually. I mean, it does increase the uh, life... For, bleh, the life I've had a lot, but... Maybe that's what I need. Maybe I need to actually, like, yeah, add some levels to this. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove Vitality, which will take out a little bit of damage, but whatever. I'm going to add Enlighten. To help a little bit. Not very much, but, like, that will save me 16 life. Is that worth it? Kinda. <laughs> Kinda is. Especially if I increase this in level again. It's only 18 life. Mm, I don't know if it's worth it. I don't think having Vitality is worth it. We'll say that. Hmm. Other option is I just axe the Enlighten. And I put Portal here. Just as that's just the spot for Portal. So we have our automation there, and we have our one buff here. So for our bar, we are going to have okay, we have three different things for our our left our mouse clicks. Left click is probably not going to have anything on it, or it's going to have detonate mines because I don't think left click is. There's some weird stuff with how left click is going to work with this and skills. I don't know if you'll be able to put skills on left click anymore. We'll see about that. Uh, middle click is probably going to be my portal, and right click is going to be my power class. That leaves the five, uh, the five main skills, and then the five, um, five hot bar, and the five alternate hot bar. So I will have the skitter bots and vol and skitter bots, grace, precision, and clarity, all on the alt bar. I'll have flammability and flame dash on the main bar, leaving three spots on the main bar and two spots, or one spot on the alt bar. I can put vault clarity on the main bar, which would be three, so that's two slots open still. Did I include the vault righteous fire yet? I don't think so. That'd be our fourth then. So I have one slot, one, I have two gem slots open and one hotkey slot on the main bar, one hotkey slot on the alt bar. Okay. Is there anything else I can put on here that would actually, like, really help me? I think. I think what type of instant skills we have in this game. Let's swap over to... The wiki here. Because automation only works with instant skills. So I'm kind of curious what that works. Instant skills and skills that don't reserve mana. Blood Rage. But the main benefit of Blood Rage is Leech, which we can't use. Attack Speed, which we can't use. And Frenzy Charges, which we already have. We don't have Rage for Berserk. We don't have enough mana to use Arcane Cloak. Convocation's useless. Reservation, reservation, reservation. Technically, you can automate detonate mines, but I don't think that there's any benefit to doing so, seeing as we can just have the wall moving.
Frost blinks an instant? Interesting. I didn't actually realize that. That means Frost Blink casts faster than Flame Dash. Interesting. That is a benefit that I wasn't aware of. It also goes farther from the looks of it. I feel like Frost Blink really hasn't been able to carve out its own slot in the game, and I think it's starting to now, and I like that. Nice to see. Mortal Call, we can't take the full benefit of, and it's going to be blocked by Steel Skin. Molten Shell be blocked. Phase Run. We could add Phase Run. It eats Frenzy Charges. We're going to have a lot of Frenzy Charges from Charged Mines. We'll have a, an excess of them. And this will eat them every four seconds. No. Wait, no. Hold on a second. Does it recharge while it's active? I don't think so. Most skills do not recharge while they're active. percent increased skill duration so if it eats one frenzy charge it's at 3.6 almost enough for its full cooldown hmm. the problem is that it gets replaced immediately if i use a skill which is not useful Because we don't need the melee damage. It just randomly will give us stealth and movement speed. But it'll also eat our frenzy charges constantly, which might actually become a problem. We might actually want it to have worse cooldown reduction, weirdly enough. Hmm. Problem is, going back to a path of building. Don't really have a lot of space here unless we move our travel skills. Back to where they were before. I guess we could take a faster casting. I don't, des I don't know if we desperately need it or not. Why isn't this changing the cast speed of Flame Dash? It's not changing it. Because it it's being weird? No. For some reason, it's not affecting Flame Dash. Why is Flame Dash's cast rate so low? It's both, that's like almost half. That shouldn't be right. Hmm. I'm so confused. <laughs> hmm. Okay, well, let's see how this goes then. I'm going to... Flammability there. Move this back to the weapon slot. Move the automated stuff over here again. Okay, so we have automation, steel skin, increased duration, and then we can have phase run. I noticed on the wiki it says to put Phase Run as the last active gem in the slot because it means, because otherwise it'll activate too soon. 
and get immediate, like, if, if you activate Phase Run first, then Steel Skin, Phase Run will immediately go to its secondary ability, which is melee damage instead of stealth. It'll just erase the movement speed bonus. Almost makes you wonder if it'd be better to just have a cast when stunned phase run instead. Because at least that means that, like... That controls for the phase run a bit better. We don't want it to go off every four seconds, really, because that's just going to eat all of our frenzy charges constantly. Which is a bit rough. And you know what? I'm going to cast when stunned here. Ah, yes, I cat when stunned. I would love to have a cat when stunned, but that's not what I need right now. Let's run. Okay. Well, that still doesn't change the fact that I have an empty slot to automate. Back to the instant page and swap. There we go. Okay, Plague Bearer? No. Hmm. Technically, you can t you can have righteous fire with automation. I wonder how that works. I should read the automation thing again. Not that stuff. Oh, there it is, automation. When the skill is active, support skills will be repeatedly triggered. Each support skill will trigger when its cooldown is over. Support skills, support skills that are instant and have no reservation cannot support skills used by totems, traps, mines, or minions. It doesn't say that it waits for their duration to be over. I really want to see what automation does to uh, Righteous Fire now. We're just like toggle it on and off constantly. Oh, automation has a 0. 0.6 second cooldown. So, and Righteous Fire has a longer cooldown than that. Or a shorter cooldown, 1.3. So it would be effectively turning on every. I mean, 1. Point, wait, 0. 0.6? Yeah, no, that'd be right. Yeah, so every 0.6 seconds, it would trigger Righteous Fire again. You can make some sort of spellcast loop with that. Pretty easily. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Withering Step. I guess you could technically trigger Withering Step. That would be... Bad because it would put my flame flame dash on cooldown. Or not to do that, thank you very much. I don't think there's anything else I need to automate. Like genuinely. Huh. I don't think there's anything else that I would benefit from automating. Oh, well that that decisively explains what I was worried about earlier. Instant skills can no longer be bound to left click. Okay, well. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder how detonate mines would work as a skill gem rather than using the. Passive tree point. I'm going to swap back. Because I could put detonate mines here. And that would mean that I wouldn't need to use uh, detonate mines as triggered while you're moving. Which would save me a skill point in exchange for a gem socket. I mean, that's not bad. I mean, and then I could change this gem socket up to something like either more damage or just more defenses or whatnot.
Hmm, I can bring this up to 500 life for generate a second. That'd be nice. 5%? 500? Do I want an extra 100 life for generate a second, or do I want to take 10% less damage? Also, I have aura effect on my mines. So this might be more than it looks like. Okay, let's look at this. It affects... It gives an 11.1% 11, 11 bonus to my hit pool. Effective hit pool. What happens when I swap away from Victar's influence? So I no longer have, like, a huge bonus to... I no longer have a huge bonus to aura effect. Uh, nope, didn't change anything. Hmm. Strange. Wait, this one's 222. That, is that the same as it was before? Oh no, it changed because I changed the, the damage changed. How do we get down to 3.3 again? What did I fuck up? Oh, flammability's off. That's that's part of the reason. Yeah, that, that's the majority of the reason. <laughs> well, I'm going to see how Detonate Mines plays with uh, automation. For a second, I thought that was... A twenty plus one uh, percent quality. I was like, "What's giving plus one percent quality?" No, it's plus one percent level. How much does this give? Holy shit! That's a four hundred thousand damage difference. Okay, well, I'm gonna use a level twenty one version then. Okay, we're almost done all this stuff too as well. Here's what we're going to do. Okay, so the first four we can't really change, I'll be honest. I want to check what what can replace combustion or trap and mine damage. Is there anything better? Because ideally, if I can find something even like slightly less powerful than trap and mine damage, I'd prefer to take it so that I have... I don't have the less mine throwing speed modifier on it. But I, I doubt we're going to find that, but I'm going to still try. Four gems. Good effect. Increased crit hypo hypothermia. And things are always going to be ch Oh, not always chilled, but things will mostly be chilled. From uh, the skitterbots. I have, we have a high chance to freeze things. Here's what I'm going to do. Alternative effect. Increased critical strikes. Epithermia. We'll see. Okay, only two of these can survive. 3 3.5, 4.1, 4.4, 4.1, 3.43. Okay, stop off those. 2, 2.6, 2.7, 5. Combustion's the lowest. Though that was giving me increased chance to ignite. Does that matter? I mean, mathematically, apparently it doesn't, so that's fine. Unless, I mean, it will affect how reliably I can access Snowforge, but... I don't think it's going to be a problem. I mean, I hit things so often. <laughs> okay, so we need to use one of these. Risk Critical Strike Chance is the lowest by a very small margin. Uh, I probably would want to take that over Conk Effect, though, because I want to have the area of effect and not have reduced area. So it's basically... It's combustion versus critical strike chance. So 5.2 versus 5.0. Yeah, 
Okay. <clears throat> 5.275. So about 5.3 million. Well, 21 minefield is good. Uh, 100,000. Change much. Change much. That. Oh, it changed the effective chance, I think. Okay, that's nothing. So Minefield is the only one of these that actually bent, really benefits from 21, besides the actual mines. Curiosity. How far can I go? I can go up to 11 mines at the most. That's 6.1. But that's not reliable because you throw in sets of five. So I'll just keep it at ten. Technically, the lowest that it could be, your lowest possible DPS here is 1.4. But something you have to keep in mind with these mines is that they are in a detonation sequence. They don't all detonate once. What that means is that. When you throw a set of mines, and they hit the ground, they start detonating from the first mine. And as that is detonating, you are throwing your next set. So by the time your next set has landed, there is still a set, some amount of your original mines on the ground. So maybe it might even be more accurate to put it down at 9. To actually properly represent the uh, damage. I don't know, it depends on how fast you're throwing. Because you can throw three sets a second, and your detonation speed on the mines... Your detonation speed on the mines... Detonation radius... I don't know what the detonation speed is. Hmm... I'm going to say that you get 10. That you can get about 10 on the ground at once. I think that's a fair assumption. That was an order of color. So we need four blues, one green, one red. On a blue green base okay so i do one off color that's nothing that's totally doable okay so we have a big bonus you could get if you get the plus five victarios I mean, it's not likely to happen, but it is an option if you have the money. Bring it up to... Bring it from 5.4 to 8 million. That's pretty good. And I mean, this can go higher. It absolutely can. It just needs more and more buffs. Really. I should split the belt, too, actually. Uh, Okay, no, I'm gonna, yeah, I'll change the original belt first. Drop that down to 60. I'll do, hmm. And I'll set this down to 35. Now I'm gonna make an advanced belt. I think you can probably get up to... I, I mean, you get up to 100, so... Or 99, so I'm going to set it at 85, which I can usually get pretty reliably. Uh, should I add ES or man? This might be a case of me adding a mod manually. So I've open... I've open prefix slots, which there's usually not much in the way of prefix slots for belts. That's not worth it. 
Oh, the, I would love to have this, but you can't have that while well, there's already another life prefix. It it blocks. Ooh. I could get life regen and mana. Or just, like, flat damage. Hmm. But I also get evasion rating energy shields. I feel like flat damage is probably the best bet. Okay. Advanced life. Oh, and I should put all of the mana, all the flasks. Okay, I'm going to change up, let's see, what, I have two different, two different anointments, I still have the destructive apparatus, I want to check really quickly if there's any better, like, mid and high end enchantments, the heart of flame is still the best, savagery, destructive apparatus, how much the throwing speed matters. How much does this reduce my throwing speed by turning it off? Wait, one second. Throwing speed 0.34, throwing speed 0.31. I don't think that throwing speed difference is enough for to enough to make that worth it. For destructive apparatus. So I'm gonna swap out destructive apparatus actually. I'm going to go for um, Divine Judgment, I think. Because that's a black oil instead of silver. Yeah, sepia teal black. That'll be way cheaper. I mean, I could even go for high voltage. That's a little bit worse. Yeah, the Divine Judgment's more reliable. Yeah, this is way cheaper. Okay. So the basic here is at 4.8, and the advanced version is at 5.5. Difference is about 400 health. Ish. The big fucking difference. <laughs> Some way I could better these so that I don't have to suffer on... I mean, I'm still stuck on decks right now. Like, that's still a problem. I haven't fixed that. The only big dex node is right there. Oh, there's a small dex node here, but that's not enough. Hmm, how can I route this that would work better? Mm hmm. 4.8. 4.4. I just took about 350,000 loss, but I just fixed my dex problem. I also can connect right here for extra strength. Where would I want to disconnect, though? I could disconnect right here. Lose an intelligence for strength. I mean, that wouldn't be bad. That's 20 decks right there. Other option, 
that back, that back. I don't lose 400,000 health. Other options I take this, which will give me dex, and it will also give me movement speed, which is good. Why does this give me evasion rating? Oh, because dex, right. Plus it gives me the life and energy shield and kill, which isn't bad. Not that useful, but it's not bad. Frick, I'm still off by two. Uh, that's a problem. Okay, let's try this from the other angle. It's Volgrace and Phase Run that are tanking my... that are making this hard on me. If I drop Volgrace down, I think the next level is 149. But I'd have to drop Volgrace and Phase Run. Which I don't think matters. I don't know what... Phase run changes by level, actually. 46. 49. Okay, so it just changed the movement speed, but, like, one level is not enough to be a problem. Okay, if I drop down to 19, it's 153. If I drop the grace down to 19, it's 151. I mean, I can just drop the Phase run down again. That's fine. I don't need to. Yeah. Yeah, apparently level 19 and level 20 phase run look about the same. It's... Oh, it's the it's the melee damage, that's the difference. Okay, that's fine. I don't I don't do melee damage. So it's actually better for me to do a 19. Does it change the mana cost? No, it doesn't. Okay. A nice little bonus. So what happens if I turn my flasks on? What do I get from these flasks? I can go up to 83% evasion chance. Get your 500,000 for my diamond flask. Looks over life regen and movement speed. I like this. I like this a lot. Yeah, I like this setup. Plus, Hinder while not on full mana is really good because I am a low mana build to begin with. I mean, I could pick immunity to something with it on, but I don't know. Also, I still have a socket I just have not filled. Red Dream. Fire damage is extra chaos. Grants fire resistance or all res in radius as an equal chance to gain endurance charge on kill. Your talent. Shadow crit chance. That's a lot. At 3.3% crit chance is actually a pretty sizable amount. Only problem is that pure talent is a punch in the junk <laughs> because of how expensive it is. I don't even want to look up pure talent because I know it's bad. Arcane surge effect. No. Orgel, Orgel's gaze existed. What league is this from? Actually, this might be from Necropolis, actually. That would explain why I haven't seen it before. There's actually a bunch of shit from Necropolis that's Abyssal-related, actually. Interestingly enough. Hmm. 
the problem is Red Dream is definitely going to be expensive. So let's just not do that. I still have the Hypnotic Eye Jewel. Yeah, that's apparently that's worth 300,000 DPS right there, so I'll just add that. Why not? Action speed. Is it the action speed that took the place of Chaos Res? Because I might actually want to grab Chaos Res in exchange. I think it's the action speed. Yeah, it is. I can drop 300,000 DPS in exchange for 7 Chaos Res. Uh, no. No, that... No. No, thank you. Hmm. I'm going to keep both these Chaos Res down at 20 because Chaos Res can be a pain to get sometimes. The other option is I switch one of these Life Rings out for an Amethyst. Which is far from bad. Uh, 55 is reasonable. Which one of these should be replaced? Let's replace... Lightning and Strength. Let's do Lightning and Strength together. Lightning... All res strength. Finding all res and strength versus I need to change one. I got the all res already. Strength and chaos. Why is my brain's just not able to process this for some reason? Okay, what am I missing? I just tanked something. What did I tank? And why can't I figure that out? <laughs> oh, my poor brain. I tanked my Chaos Res, that's what I did. No, I didn't. No, I didn't tank my Chaos Res because it, it's an implicit now. That's why the only reason I didn't tank my Chaos Res there. Okay, now I understand what's going on. I'd love to get some more um, reduced channeling skill uh, crafts. That'd be nice. Get one of those. Uh, this is not supposed to have all res on it. I could do all res, or I could do strength and then all attributes. That would take care of both of them. And then I could do... Get rid of that. Okay, hold on a second. I'm going to make this a basic ring. Those are both basics. Now I'm going to make an advanced version. 60, up to 23. Let's strength up a little bit, and then I will add an insect catalyst. We'll add some extra attributes.
And then... I'm going to split this one to an advanced. Advanced ring amethyst. Back to the basic gear, and I'm going to remove the mana reservation, or the, the reduced mana cost, because I'm not going to be able to realistically do that for a basic ring, because it'll take a while to get that craft. Start our life. I don't... Okay, good. I do have an advanced life belt. That's good. Eventually, I'm going to want to put this on it. Some sort of quality something. I also might grab some sort of uh, influence something. That is another possibility. Our damage against burning enemies. Hmm. That's nice. Okay. Well, we've been looking at this for quite a while now. Can I make this a relic? Okay, yeah. I'm gonna mark that as a relic just so that it's different differentiated from all the other stuff, because it's not used right now because it's special. It's just meant to be there as like, hey, you could do this if you have an ungodly amount of money. Oh, you have two void batteries. Be a lot, a lot of money. <laughs> oh god, the in the intelligence requirement n plus ninety to intelligence requirements for the character. Fuck that. Oh, but four percent extra crit chance. Ooh, ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. Okay, just just for the sake of. Fucking around, I want to see this. 5.5 versus... Wow, that's a big difference! Uh, the only problem with... Uh, e Wait, no, these are Void Batteries. I was about to say the only problem with using them is that they deal damage to you, but that's the Shimmeron I'm thinking of. I don't like Shimmeron. I feel like 200 damage per power charge is just a ridiculous amount. Like, maybe there's some special way to mitigate that that I'm not aware of, but as far as, like, uh, that's just too much for me. I've never been able to find a way to, like, to mitigate it enough that I feel comfortable using it. Well, the Dark Seer is good for this. I feel like with plus two to all spell skill gems, it's going to be the, one of the best scepters in the league. So it's probably not going to be cheap, but that would be amazing for this build, apparently. I guess it's something just to keep an eye on. Technically, there are staves, too, I could pick. Annihilating Light, 4.4 million extra DPS. I mean, yeah. Minus, like, 50 res. Everything. 
basically have to spend... I'd have to remove one of my, my unique pieces and replace it with something giving me extra resistances to use something like this. Also, it's not, like, a basic thing. I'd have to... Alright, like, that takes money. So, that's not happening. Well, I mean, there's always the annihilating light. <laughs> always something to think about. Malachi's loop is fun. The only problem is that you'll never be at maximum power charges because you'll always be shocked. Like, because you constantly get power charges from this because charged mines is ridiculous with. Characters that hit a lot and have high crit chance. Um, but you're just going to get shocked constantly by this. <laughs> so you'll never really take advantage of the plus two power charges. At most, you'll take advantage of one of them. Like, the Malachi's Loop is best used when you have minimum power charges. Like, minimum power charges that equal your maximum, basically. This is not good for a bind build where you're constantly throwing mines. <laughs> I think Rapid Glow is just going to be better if you have using something different. It's just, it's meant for other things. Hey, let's look at jewelry. Is there any jewelry that would, like, be amazing? Lyric Devastation. I mean, yeah. I mean, of course, Mage Blood. Oh, Magnate's here now because the because uh, my strength is high enough that it can uh, up the uh, my strength is high enough that it would be able to up the strength above two hundred. How much life would I lose? 167 life. And a little bit of res. No, a notable amount of res, actually. I don't really want to do that to myself. I think. I don't know if I can fit Polaric Devastation in, somehow. If I take out the Coral Ring, maybe. It'd be pretty hard to do, though. Because I have to make up for the... all the attributes there. Also, I'd lose 200 life doing it. Uh... I make up for that anywhere else. Wait. Why? I... I was gonna move the Chaos Res over to the Amethyst Ring, but then it... but it occurs to me that the Amethyst Ring is in fact an Amethyst Ring, which would mean it'd be much, much more expensive to get Chaos Res on Chaos Res. So I have to be kind of aware of that. Okay, assuming that I can figure out the problem. Does this count the Covered in Ash? Yes, it does. Okay. Okay, so the big bonus is because of Covered in Ash that it's giving me so much. 
advanced coral ring. That's what's going on. Hmm. I can cover Nash anywhere else, is what I'm wondering. Where else do you cover Nash from? You covered Nash from Infernal Cry. Did I fit Infernal Cry into my build? <laughs> no, that's probably a bad idea. Uh, okay, let me swap over to the wiki again. Cover Nash. Zoff's heart does does cover Nash. If I am willing to drop like two hundred and fifty thousand circles strike damage. Hmm. Not really a lot of good options, I admit. Cover Nash is not a very accessible uh, thing, really. I guess that's why Zoff's Heart and Poly De Polaric Devastation are so valuable. Let's, let's swap back for a second. I want to see if I can make Polaric Devastation fit. Swapping back... Put Blurk does Devastation in. That bricks my strength completely. Kind of expected that. Okay, adding strength there. And now I have attributes again. Okay, now I have 80, 79, 10. I'm over overcapped. That's a problem. I guess in that case, then what I need to be doing. Eh? is swapping, I guess swap cold for lightning. Lightning chaos? That me brings me back in line now. Oh, that is a stacked belt, unfortunately, though, because that's life, strength, life, lightning, chaos. That's... Mm. That's 60 res, 130 life, and 45 strength. That's, that's too much. That, that's it's gonna make it too hard to buy that. What can I swap around? If I added a life, 
I mean, a resistance would be ideal. But if I added a life and mana thing to this, I could increase this up to minus 8 from minus 7 and increase the life as well. How expensive is that? Not incredibly, I don't think. I don't know how much Polaric Devastation is worth is the problem. I completely forget. I believe it's reasonable. Though this is also the advanced gear, so it is going to be a bit more expensive, just in general. How did I get my movement speed so high? How'd that happen? Oh, wait, hold on a second. Is that... Is that perhaps... Because of phase run? Yes. You know, phase run isn't always going to be on. Turn that off for a second. I want to check the Sulfur Flask again as well. Sulfur Flask... Crit? Crit 50. Wait, what? There's no difference in damage. Why is there no difference in damage? Oh, because they're not activated. Duh. Okay, 5.6. Versus... 5 point... Okay, they're both 5.6, but technically the diamond is more. Okay, so nothing has changed. Okay, I just want to make sure. Okay. What happened to my resistances? What did I do in my resistances? <laughs> oh, it's because I'm move moving things around here, I think. I was moving things around the advanced section, though. That shouldn't have affected it. Hmm. I want to put I want to put chaos res on here, but I can't because it's going to be too expensive. Hmm. Is it better to just put chaos res on here? Because like I already can't take, I already can't tank a uh, a elemental weakness map anyways. I guess I should remember again. These these are just dummy pieces of gear to represent what you need roughly. They aren't set in stone. So I should keep that in mind cuz I'm trying to make them too good, I think. Okay. Let's look back at the tree. Is there anything else we want to do on the tree? Well, we still have time to do that. Anything else that needs to be done? 
two over right now. Two points over what I'd prefer because I try to keep things at 90. That will, that will not have an effect unless advanced gear. Yep. Apparently Wind Dancer adds a lot. Out of curiosity, how much melee boost have you made by attack recently? Oh, that's 10% evasion chance. Okay, I should be using I think I need to use uh, Wind Dancer. That's too good not to use. Unfortunately, that is just making my problem worse. I'm still very over. Could I could move these over, but they're they there's too much damage in them. I don't want to drop that. How's the crit thing over here? 661 for 4. So 150? 150, 160. 160,000 apiece for the. That's 112. These are 93. Wait, in that case, can I. I can do that. That tanks a little bit of damage, but now this is more efficient. That's now 600 for 3. Yeah, that's better. Um. Still applies. Oh, I need the mana reservation efficiency really badly, so I can't do anything with that. That has to stay there. Can't go anywhere. I could just dump 600,000 DPS and just call it a day. A lot of DPS to dump, though. How much is this? Ooh, 250,000 apiece. That's way too expensive for me to dump. Be careful. 300,000 apiece. More sense to do this. I don't think that really and does anything though. I mean, technically, I can take off these, but I don't want to take off more life. I already lost enough life. One second. Okay. Three for five sixty and. Three for four seventy eight, making that the weaker one of the two. Put that back up there. Wait, what was that? Enemies on full life. That's good for mapping, not for bossing. Okay, so that is gonna have a calculator four eighty eight divided by three. So that is. 162,000 per point. If I'm going to be removing that, I might as well chop off some of these instead, because these are only 104s. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4. Five. That got me two points back in exchange for... How much damage? Six hundred that oh I lost like five hundred thousand DPS doing that. Five hundred thousand DPS for two points is not good. That's way too much. But I still need to use points to connect to it somehow. Hmm. 
Hmm. I want to keep this movement speed, but I could technically remove these and pick up the dex node right there instead. Wait, this is projectile damage. Wait, this is projectile damage. I do. I have. I, yeah. I use projectiles. Yeah, it's projectiles. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay. Well, I'm gonna move a bit slower. I I have accepted that. I'm still off by two points. I still want to remove two points from this somehow. These are 100 and 105, no, 155 apiece. I'd pick these two together. Five oh four divided by three makes this 108. This is still worth more. Technically, if I chop this off and add just that, that's leaving it 6.4. One second, 6.4 versus this, 6.8. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, yeah, that's fine. I mean, if I want more damage later on, I can always grab these as, like, an extra thing. Plus, I can also grab Replenishing Remedies if I need more flash charges, too. There's a lot of things here I could grab. Oh my gosh, I'm right beside Heart of the Oak. Like, six apiece. Or six percent max life apiece. Effectively. Oh. Now I want that. <laughs> Hold on a second. Okay, let's try to do some math here. Okay, we're at 3889. 3,889 life. 3,889. 3,889. There's about 18 more life to do it that way. 18 more life, plus when I use a life flask, I get 2% more life regen. And I get an extra tw or twenty eight percent chance to avoid stun. That's better. Nice. That's a nice little pickup. A six. I don't. If I could grab the six, I would really like to get the other six percent. That'd be nice. Thir One thirty-five. You know what? A hundred life is more important than one hundred thirty-five thousand damage. Okay, I'm over four thousand life now. With the advanced gear, the basic gear is at thirty-eight hundred. I like this. I'm torturing my path of building as it's trying to desperately sort things. <laughs> Here, you can sort. I won't bother you. One last sort of all of the items in the game. Because I think we're just about done updating this build. Divinarius. Uh, 
Uh, how much is Divinarius? You there, Pyro? I'm soon on. I haven't seen you. I'm not sure if Divinarius is valuable. I wonder if Huey Ninja still has its stuff up for affliction. Huey dot ninja. Uh, you need weapons. I I don't see it in the first set. That's good. I haven't seen it yet. That's that's good to see. To not see, I guess. It's a good sign that I'm not seeing it immediately. Oh, that was for standard. Okay, hold on a second. Affliction. Divinarius. Five div. Ouch. Hmm. Okay, so that's very expensive. Okay, 5.5. Okay. Yeah, I mean, so it's about... Let's say it's under about 6 this div. So that's expensive, but, like, it's not... Ridiculous. Actually, let's... While I'm here... Cleric Devastation. Please don't be too much. 191 for Affliction, and Ancestor was about 50. So an average of, like, 120. That's... I that's acceptable. For the advanced gear. Swapping back. Okay, so Divinarius is not something I'm going to pick up, necessarily, for this at the start, but it is worth noting that it exists. Because that means that... Wait, no, I don't need two of them. Okay, six point... Let's say 6.3 million. Wait, you can do... You can do Dagger Scepter? I didn't even know that. <laughs> Huh. Just out of curiosity. Oh! <laughs> okay, so if you're willing to dump like 15 div into it, you can pick up a pair of Divinarius and a plus 5 Victario for 13 million DPS. I'll be back for a second. Wow. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I have an idea. And gear, copy, Uber gear. This is like the ridiculous stuff, I guess. Arias. Oh, look at that difference. That's a 7 million difference. By swapping the... the ch just getting a, a Corrupt Implicit on the chest plate and swapping up the two weapons. That's ridiculous. Actually, hold on a second. We should also... While we're at it... Should increase that to about 130. Because I find that's usually pretty reasonable. And we're going to add some crit catalysts, too. Why did that make it seem like it went down? Oh, you can't add crit catalysts to a uh, Marlene's. I always forget that because it increases the less critical strike chance multiplier, which actually decreases your damage in the long run. 
Okay, just out of curiosity. What is the breakpoint? <laughs> okay, so exactly plus two quality on your mar. Hold on a second. Let's let's do it this way. Let's save that so I can see this. Okay, if you want an extra sixty three thousand DPS, you can add two percent crit, uh, crit, uh catalyst to your marlines but if you add any more it increases the less critical strike chance mod and then you're fucked the other option is you could just like take the six int instead though i don't know if you want six int for anything it doesn't really matter you could get two energy shield and 0.1 of a mana regen per second so, one mana regen every 10 seconds, and two energy shield. I guess if you there was like some sort of uh, uh, attribute requirement you had to meet, that would be a thing. Okay, so we'll do this the silly way then. Okay, so you need exactly 2%. <laughs> I mean, that's really cheap, if nothing else. I'm not, like, I'm not upset with that, but it is funny. Actually, actually, here's, okay, another, another thought. We need 155 int. We get int from a bunch of things. Uh, do we have any all attribute? No, we don't. I'm aware of. I don't want to say any all attribute. Okay. This I'm safe then. So what you could do is get a corrupt one, potentially. Increase grace or effect. Oh, that's so good. You can apply additional curse. Holy shit, that would be amazing. There's a whole lot of things you can get here. Grace or effect is actually really nice. That's 2% of a chance. That's a lot at when you're this high. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick... Or not that. I'm going to corrupt it to Grace. Grace. Thank you. Okay, probably not going to put the catalyst on because it just won't have time. Where's the break point? Oh. There is no break point in, in this area. Okay, so you can go as low as 15% safely. Okay, and that is going to get added to the Uber gear. <laughs> Anything I can add to the Flaric Devastation for a corruption? Corruption. I know you can add... Uh, I know you can add curses. Oh, level 21 flammability. That would be amazing. That's a thing, right? Yep. No 23 flammability. Oh, that would decrease my... That would decrease my damage? Really? I guess 20% increased elemental damage is more than I thought. We can also add Turbulent, because that's not very expensive. Okay, hold on a second. Let's disable... Where's our... What's going on? Oh. There's our curse. Okay. 
Okay, 13.3 is the number we're looking for. I'm going to corrupt the um, ability onto it. Wait, what? What didn't that... Oh, because it's not on the thing, that's why. It's basically the same thing. Except for I get an extra gem socket, but I don't get the benefit of the... Don't get the benefit anymore of the... Inspiration. Making this cost 45, which is too much. Anyways, so... Fluff that. That go away now. Bye bye. Unless there is yet another one I could pick. I mean, okay, I can do that to start with. Is there another corruption I could pick that would be actually on par? Fire damage to spells and attacks. I'd be up to seventy-two thousand more. But it still comes up short. Also, I can't add any more elemental mods then. Nah. I'm not going to get anything better than that. I'll add the two crit just as a... That's what you need. Just You can't go over two crit, because if you go over two crit, you suddenly lose a lot of damage. <laughs> ah. You lose 150,000 damage there. Oh, that's a break point. 150,000, 100,000, 150, 217, 170, 322... It keeps going up and down because the uh, the less critical every time the less critical strike thing in increments, it goes up, and then every time the crit multi goes up, it de increments. Why well, it's constantly going up and down? It's funny. Okay. Can we actually get movement speed on the boots? Like additional movement speed? I realize action speed is good, but how much would I lose by removing the action speed? Ooh, that actually that concerns me now. Oh wait, hold on a second. It's inflated because I'm on the Uber here. That's why. Action speed. Uh, 250,000. That's not very much. Exchange for movement speed? That's, yeah, that's not a big deal. Oh! James 440901. No. Damn it, I almost got it. James 440909. Thank you for following. Appreciate it. I'm glad someone is appreciating our... Four of me rambling about this one particular build. <laughs> so I'm trying to get it ready for tomorrow, ideally. I also want to put a build video out as soon as I can for it, because, I mean, it's a very, a very thin budget, and it goes pretty high, so I'm pretty excited for it. But I hope you enjoy the stream. It's always nice to have more people, even if you just stop in to say hi. I'll, I'll make that six. That gives you 36, which is nicer. Okay, I hope the Dorianus Catalysts aren't too hard to get. They're level 75? Oh gosh. Uh, okay, hold on. 
Um, let me see if there's something I can, like, drop down to that would be less terrifying, level-wise. I mean, Dark Seer, but I still don't think the Dark I don't have no idea what the Dark Seer is going to be worth. And based on the fact that it's beating Singularity, which was the thing that is always recommended to me by Path of Building, it makes me feel like... That's probably going to be ridiculously priced now. I mean, blind doesn't affect you. You inflict malediction on things that you blind, so they deal 10% less damage to everyone. And plus two to all spell skill gems. Like, that's extremely powerful. Wait. Wait, what? My unreserved mana goes down. Up. Why? Are auras spell skills? I mean, I guess that makes sense. Oh shit! Okay, so the Dark Seer is now going to be a chase item. That's like the thing that every aura bot needs now. Fuck the fuck the Kingmaker. That's, that's like, super good, because that's plus two to all of your auras, all of your guard skills, uh, all of your buff skills, pretty much, except War Cries. For mind skills, that's, like, everything. Okay, yeah, the Dark Seer is going to be ridiculous. Anyways, I wonder how bad Cerberus limbs are. That's a bit more realistic. Them and Heartbreakers are realistic compared to... Div or not Divinarius, compared to uh, Doriana's Catalyst. Because Doriana's Catalyst is a bit late. Okay. And back we go to Pee-wee Ninja. Okay, um... My brain just stalled. Cerberus Limbs. Cerberus Limb... Um, excuse me? Oh, that's a special one, okay. Cerberus Limbs in Standard are 8C. In Affliction, they were 5C. In Ancestor, they were 5C. Okay, Cerberus Limbs it is. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's definitely going to be worth it. It looks like it benefits mainly when you have a shield, but meh. <laughs> okay, swapping back. P O B B B B B B P O B. Okay. So in the basic gear, up over. Right, uh, Cerberus limb. And Cerberus Limb. Okay, well, that's going to cut my damage a bit, but, like... It's going to cut my damage by 400,000, but... That's not really a bad thing, because, like... The Cerberus Limb is... You can get up to 4.4 million without... Even getting the Dorianus Catalyst, so even if it takes a moment for people to, to get to the... Uh, to uh, the normal at Ziri, and you're really in a rush... You'll still be okay... Except for I don't know where Cerberus limbs come from. Oh. Oh. They come from a Delve boss. They come from a Delve boss! <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Oh no, that's not good. Maybe I should have looked at, like, the history. Okay, uh, swapping back. Let's look at the history for Cerberus Limb. So it started, uh... Oh. Wait, so Five Chaos is actually their most expensive.
Ah, huh. okay. So these are just, like, obscenely cheap, usually. Ancestor... Serb. First limb. Way. We're off. Three, four. Yeah, I mean, looks like at the very. Can I zoom in on this anyhow? No, I can't zoom in on the thing. I think. Okay, yeah, there's no zooming in on that. Oh well. Unless, like, I could zoom in on some parts, but I want to see the that way. Yeah, I can't drag it. Aw. It looks like when it starts, it's up to, like, 15 on launch day. That's really not much. Realistically. Oops. That was not the right key. There we go. Don't mind me. Okay. Hmm. What's your heart? Maybe I should look at the heartbreakers instead. <laughs> I could have like a hundred and thirty percent. Oh no! Wait. I can have like a hundred and twenty percent increased or faster energy sh shield recharge <laughs> if I have two of them. That would be kind of silly. Okay, recharge delay is two seconds currently. I mean, I don't have much much energy shield anyways, but I'm just curious. One brings down to one point two five seconds, and two brings it down to point nine seconds. Wow, that's actually really fast. <laughs> Maybe I should put a Heartbreaker and a Cerberus limb together. Yeah, I'm going to put a Heartbreaker and a Cerberus limb together. It's a bit weird, but I'll do that. It'll help a little bit in the scaling up. Scaling up game. Well, at least you know you can use an Axiom pretty safely at level 10. <laughs> what else is going on here? And not much has changed here. Hillary. Our poor... Wait, not Crystallized Amnesia. What was the one that we got during the last league? It's the other expensive one. Destruction thing? I don't know. Burning something, I don't know. God damn it, I can't remember. <laughs> now I want to know. Match of the Stars, that was the one that we got. Twenty percent quality to all skill gems. I mean, it's probably way more expensive this league, though, so not really worth looking at. Wait, Zoff's heart is actually better than Marlene's Fallacy? Seriously? What? 
Then my basic Marlene's? It has, my basic Marlene's is anointed. Hold on a second. Let's put a Heart of Flames on here. Advanced gear. Yeah, that's way worse for some... I don't know why it seemed like it was better. Okay, 6.2 versus... I'm going to add... It, does it already have... Okay, it already has registered cover Nash. That means that's not helping. Okay, I'll do that then. Oh well. I tried off. But your heart will forever ever be left to to, to you. Yeah. <laughs> words. Words. Words, words, words. Really liking this. This is really looking good. Oh, I should actually look at the... I haven't even touched any of this for a while. Okay. So we have the blind. That's particularly quite good for Born Shadows. Um, that's where all my life regen comes from, so that's not going away. Like clockwork for... Will on reduction. Will on reduction. On what? <laughs> what do I have with cooldowns? Steel skin. Steel skin. And phase run. Okay, that's not useful. Okay, well this gives me an extra 1.2 million DPS. <laughs> that's why we look at these things. Because you might forget that you've just done something silly. So, either I do 700 from that, or 1.2 with that. So this is 500 more. This gives me a 20% chance to take 50% less area damage from hits. I don't like that. That's very... Very... Un... Un... It would make more sense if these damage numbers were swapped, because this is unreliable. And this one is reliable. Because the Skitterbots will always be shocking and chilling things that they're near, and anything I hit, I'm going to be burning. Because I have a 66% chance to ignite. Sixty-six percent chance to ignite on 20 projectiles per set of mines. <laughs> As always, this build is kind of silly. Okay. I shouldn't just, like, look at... I guess I could look at the other things to see if any of them are better, but... I mean, nothing's gonna be better than my 10% life redone a second that I'm getting from this. Plus, I have Ignite and Shock Immunity, which is really good. It's all ES related. Okay, this this ascendancy effectively gives me five million, according to this. 
5 million DPS. I guess you could say 4.8. 2, 3.5. And I probably would take one of these sets. Being able to overleach energy shield is pretty nice. I guess it's not an overleach. Technically, it's just not losing its leech. I don't know if that works for me, seeing as I'm a mind belt. The soul drinker should mind its own business. Aha! Funny joke. Okay. Uh, 1.8. I think Saboteur is the right way to go. I don't think I'm going to find anything better, really. Let's rename this. What do I want to name this? The Pyroclast Mind Build. I have this strange urge to name it Pyroclasm for some reason. I'm not sure where that's from. Am I spelling that right? Yes, I'm spelling that right. Okay, cool. Oh my gosh, I remember the Pale Court. I love all these notes I left for myself, just like how to remember how to play the build. So cute. Pyro, pyro, pyro. Okay. I mean, these are decent tips. Pyroclass. Mind Saboteur. Is there really much to add to that? It's a very basic mind build. <laughs> okay, so what order should we take our stuff in?
explosives expert. By the time we get to our first lab, we probably will have skitterbots already. So I will be able to assure at least two of these. Other option is that we go Demolition Specialist and rush Pyromaniac. I'm gonna say Demolition Specialist, Pyromaniac. That order. Demolition Specialist first, route to Pyromaniac. That's kind of the most important thing. Strong defensive layer for miners. Fire Manic is like a really strong defensive layer. It's never, never underestimate regenerating 10% of your life a second. It's a big deal. Plus, Ignite and Shock are both a problem that you will encounter, so being immune to them is great. Uh, okay. I would highly suggest going to Born Shadows next to make sure you can survive things, you're not just dying. The newbie losing XP. I mean, the other option is that you start, um, that you start explosives expert into Born in Shadows, into Demolition Specialist, into Pyromaniac, but then you don't have Pyromaniac until level 75. And Pyromaniac continues to be one of the... Wait, hold on a second. If you're... I Usually when I get to the end of the campaign, I don't have any more than, like, 1900 health. Let's say 1500, if, like, you're running really low. That's only 150 life a second, then you're regenerating. No, that's pretty significant still. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think I think I'm okay with, with what I picked. Uh oops. Does that work? I forget. Oh. I deleted an eight. Explosives expert. I mean, Demolition Specialist is the highest damage of all of it. Pyromaniac is good for defenses. Born Shadows means that you'll be able to keep your XP so you can keep leveling, and then Explosives Expert will help you level up, level through your maps. Or upgrade your tiers of the maps. And Marlene's Fallacy... Use no more than two unstable catalysts on it, or lose DPS. Such a weird concept. But it's true. You're going to obtain Marlene's pretty early, since Marlene's only level 40. Lyric Devastation is level 80. Wow, I didn't even notice that. I don't think I'm going to do, like, an acquisition guide for all of this. Like, what to get when. I mean, the, one of the first things you'll get is your Dodor's tenure. But, like, 
besides saying that, I don't think there's really much else to add. Okay, that's useful. And then for mapping... And check a few of these things. Okay. Anything else weird going on? No. I'm going to make the Divinarius relics to di differentiate them. The Uber gear is going to be green. Just to differentiate the fact that it is going to be more expensive for not necessarily any good reason. Like relics. <laughs> It to me that I could also get a jewel that has strength and dex on it, and I can save myself a whole lot of hell that I've been going through. Eh, <laughs> uh, I'll do with that later. Okay, so let's check out our ascensions. Our ascensions, our gods. I think... I mean, I think Brian King's probably going to be the best bet. It's just... Really, really good. It's a really strong defensive one. It's always worth considering just for the freeze avoidance, but I mean, chill having half effect on you, blocking more often, recovering from stun faster so you don't get hit again and maybe stunned again, uh, avoid being like uh, multi stunned, so like stunned like one time after another after another, like kind of keeping you stunned which is the actual main benefit of it. Anaris is useful, but not useful enough. Hmm. I mean, our Kali could protect you against some stuff. I mean, Queen of the Great Tangles, Uxher, Plus forty percent chaos res against against dots. So poison. I don't think that affects like ground effects, which is some of the worst part. If you're like like desecrated ground, you're dealing with that. Now I think Solar Brain King's just too good to ignore that. Actually, wait. This this begs a question. If we avoid freezes, we're immune to shocks, and we're immune to ignites, and chill has half effect on us, we don't need any elemental ailment avoidance. That is actually completely useless to us. Not completely, but like, almost completely. Movement speed searing X-Arch, so we now got our eater thing back. We can add Poison Avoidance. That's a 35% chance to avoid Poison. That's not bad. Not amazing, but not bad. Could add a little bit of Recovery to Travel Skills. I don't know how big a deal that is. Ooh, cool down. 2.7 seconds. I save this. The advanced section. 2.4. So every 2.4 seconds it gets your extra charges. So to get up to 3 it takes 1 second less than usual. Rather than taking... 
Rather than taking eight, a little over eight seconds, take seven seconds to get to three charges. Hmm. Don't know if that's worth it. Leads not doesn't really matter because we have an, a flask of a laying. Clone recovery is not that useful to us. I'm thinking life regen because that's 44 life regen a second. That's not bad. That's about 1% of our, our total life back. And it will just scale with everything else, too, so... Oh, well, that's a bit lower than I, than I hoped, but whatever. Eight. That's 28 life regen or Kulonic travel skills. You know what? I don't have enough life regen to that to make a big enough deal. Oh, oops. Okay, that's a little bit better now. Which is this? This is the uh, nerve. 20, I picked the 20 already, okay. And... Where's fire exposure? Uh, it doesn't matter which of these I pick, because it gets bumped up to negative 18% 18 from the mastery, so that can be literally as low as you want it to be. No difference. One forty, sixty six, two eleven, break point at three percent. That's not worth going up to. And a cost of attacks, that's not useful. Damage for power charge. That's just barely not useful. Actually, this does give you more mapping DPS than flammability. Because flammability, you're not going to be using constantly. You're going to use it a bit less because if you're just, like, rushing through things, you're just going to be killing them fast, and that's that. You won't be using flammability on every single pack you encounter. So this actually is a higher amount of DPS, even though it's slightly lower DPS, because it like it'll, it'll be more um, reliable DPS since you don't have to do anything to cause it. Hello. Are you not working? Okay. There. Oh. So we're swapping between. Uh, okay, the basic gear is. There would not be. Have I crit recently? If I have a mind build? That just occurred to me. Doesn't seem to affect anything, but... Huh. Anyways. Basic build. Uh, 4.8 unbuffed. Buffed, it can go up to... Six point three. Though to righteous fire and activate your thing at the right time is a pain. No, because your flask activates automatically, so that doesn't matter. Okay, and then our advanced will have unnerve. 
So our advanced sits at 7.5 million DPS. Unbuffed. And then when buffed... Spikes up to 9.8, so basically 10 million. So 7.5 to 10 million, basically. Okay, unbuffing now. And then the Uber gear. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's just ridiculous to me. Okay, Uber gear, unbuffed, 50... <laughs> 15 mil- 15.5 million. Buffed. 20.5 million. <laughs> and like, I'm pretty conservative when it comes to how I- how I do my math, so I'm confident that I don't have any more than a 10% margin of error. Like, even I think 10% it would- is like- giving myself a very wide berth, like... I'm gonna say I don't think I have any more than a 5% margin of error with DPS. Like, I've played this game enough to be very careful with that. Oh my gosh. Oh, I just noticed. The trap and mine damage gets plus 2 from the, uh, mine, um... from the plus 2 to mines. So does the charge mines and the minefield. What's the difference here? Five, three, forty five. Five, three, forty five. Wait. Is there no difference between 21 22? It's not. Oh, the next bonus is pretty bit pretty far away. Another 2. Okay, so once so you only need a level 20 minefield if you're once you have the plus gear, you don't need level 21 anymore. I realize it's probably expensive to get a Pyroclast Mine of Sabotage that's level 21, but... Don't know what to say. It's worth it. <laughs> it's worth it. Every part of this suggests it's worth it. I don't even have a good gem for this. I could actually add, like, a really good gem for the Uber gear, too. Anything I could add that would be... stellar? Oh my gosh, I... Items window, right, okay. My brain is slowly screeching to a crawl. My brain is quickly screeching to a crawl! <laughs> okay, I want to check Red Dream... And pure talent. Swapping to chrome. No, that's not how we do this. We dot ninja. Pure talent. Okay, ten in standard. In Affliction, it was 10. In Ancestors, it was 10. Okay, so I thought that was more expensive than that, but apparently not. Huh. I really would have thought that'd be more expensive, but it doesn't seem to be. If it's seriously that cheap, then there's no reason not to add that to the build. And I guess just for the hell of it, Red Dream. 
Red Dream is worth about 15. Uh, it starts much higher because since it comes from Zoff specifically. Yeah. That doesn't surprise me. I don't have anything granting res in the radius, so that's not going to be able to benefit me anyways. Okay, pure talent, I guess, then. I did not realize that it was so cheap. Wait, it's, I think... I must be thinking of the replica one. It looked like the replica one was really expensive. Okay, that's a 500k. More damage. Still trying to get the basic build over 5 million. <laughs> <sighs> Solaris is really good for when you're doing your first first couple laps because reduced physical damage when there's only one enemy nearby usually affects Izaro and most of his skills are area damage so that also affects Izaro I don't know if I would put in any other gods besides Brian King for bossing actually a lot of Brian King stuff isn't very good for bossing come to think of it I guess Solaris for bossing. That's fair. That is fair. Oh, that's minor. Right there. Heavy damage reduction for protection. And then Brian King for mapping. Freeze protection. And slash stun prevention. Plus, we do have 15% chance to block. So that does. I mean, we do get use our. The block recovery does matter. Okay, we also have Rislatha, which is really good for a build like this because uh, life blast charges are important. I'm going to have a constant income of blast charges, though. Maybe I don't need Rislatha. Could go Shikari. It would protect me a bit. Curse effect reduction is always good. I guess it's either curse effect reduction or. Chaos damage and poison reduction. Probably the chaos damage and poison reduction, because most of your ghoul doesn't benefit me since I don't take reflected damage. Wait, chance to reflect hexes. Okay, that actually does matter. So, reflect so when you reflect a hex, what happens is they successfully hex you, and there's a 50% chance that, that they get hexed with the same thing. It doesn't actually reflect it, it just... Actually, I guess it does reflect in the same, like, it is a reflection, but it doesn't, like, it reflects it, it doesn't deflect it. And I'm, once again, on the wrong video thing. Let's try this again. It'll be much easier when you can actually see what's going on. I'm gonna put Shikari down.
Hurry! Chaos Defense. I don't really... I don't think I need Rislatha. No, I'll say Rislatha for boss fights, just because you don't want to run out of charges. Better to be safe than sorry. Plus, it gives you a huge bonus to how much you recover when you're on low life. Or, wait, recovery amount or rate? No, it, it's recovery amount. So, about, so this goes from 2,500 to 3,500 when I'm on low life. That's, that's good. That, I mean, that's my whole health pool, pool, whole health pool, basically. Maybe I shouldn't suggest that people get a Shroud of the Lightless and then go buy a six link Victario's influence later. Hmm. No, I'm gonna stick to my guns on this one. Also because we're four wow, we're almost five hours into the stream. No, nope, we're over five hours into the stream. Okay, I'm going to call this good. Yep, I'm going to call this good. Okay, so... We're going to end off the stream uh, fairly soon, but first we have something else to do. I'm going to apply this passive tree to the cur my current Pyro class mine character, and we're just going to try it. You can get some gameplay after... All of that. <laughs> I appreciate that y'all like listening to me ramble about this stuff forever. Because it's very interesting to me. And I know it's very interesting to some people, but not everyone. <laughs> I wonder if I have a Divinarius. That wouldn't surprise me if I had a Divinarius. Hmm. Nope. Too expensive. I do have a Doriani's, though. That does not surprise me. Though I think these are too specially made to want to replace them anyways. I'm not going to fuck with too much stuff here, because there's a lot there. What I am going to do is I'm just going to change the... I'm going to just change the passive tree. Oh, I gave up my my respec. Right. Oh well. I'll use my nine hundred orbs of regret, I guess. 
I don't really need to be too careful with it, I don't think. Oh. Uh, I'll take that back. All of that. I'll leave that there. I, there's a good chance I have a pure talent. I should try that. Wait, I should probably have ghost rounds. Can't recover or energy shield above evasion rating, but uh, but the, my evasion rating is. 20, 23,000. Lose a Ghost Shroud... Oh. When hit, lose a Ghost Shroud to recover energy shield equal to 3% of your evasion rating. Equal to 3% of your evasion rating. Well, 1% is 230. So that means that's about 700 energy shield you can regenerate with one ghost shroud. So that would fully that would fully fill my <laughs> my ES. That's actually really nice. Sure. I'll do that. Okay, I'll put the It's cannot be damaged thing there. Anything else that I need to... Yeah, I need to remove this. Don't need that. Oh, that's not going to work. Wait, what? Something's wrong. Oh yeah, that got shifted over to the wrong mastery. That's why that's wrong. Because I don't have a Victarios to try it on. I don't, I'm going to have to deal with having a little bit less life. I don't know if all of my stuff has evasion on it. Evasion, 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 evasion. Okay, yeah, I can do that. Undo that. So I don't need it. Don't need arrow dancing. Oh, hi, Sephodium. Sephodium? Is that how I pronounce it? I think so. Also, I'm very nice. How are you today? Flattery will get you everywhere. <laughs> Something's off. Is this... Oh, yes. I need that. Still four points off. Is it... Did I do something weird? Oh, yeah, because I get mana reservation efficiency there. And I haven't set that yet. That's why. Oh my gosh, I'm really excited. <laughs> it's it's going to sound really fucking stupid, but I only found out, like, <laughs> just earlier that it's League Start tomorrow. I just, for some reason, my brain just did not register that. Because, like, I think I've seen the date before and I've been like, oh, yeah, that's a while away. No, it is March 28th today. <laughs> that means it's going to be March 29th soon. Oh, uh, I am very excited, though. It's going to be fun. Anything else I should grab? No, fuck it. I'm delighted that you joined the stream.
Okay, got that on. Okay. So we are going to... We are just going to play with what we have here. It's not all right stuff, but... Uh, that is now the right passive tree, if nothing else. Oh no, that's quite late. Yeah, it's only quarter past ten here. Though, that being said, I should also head out soon. I wanted to do a bit of gameplay before the end of the stream because this entire time we've been re we've been updating one of my old builds. And I have to say I am super impressed with how how versatile this build is. Cuz I did not expect it to be as powerful to end up as powerful as it has. But looking good. This is just the scuffed older version, so this isn't actually what it will look like totally, but... I mean, okay, this is what it will look like, it's just that it's not nearly as powerful as it should be. Oh, that sucks. I don't know what time League Start happens at here, like 4 or something? Okay, yeah, I should... I wasn't sure what I was going to league start with, honestly, but after seeing the power that I've been able to get out of this build, I think this is the build that I'm going to be using. Yeah, I am... I'm conflicted about that, because I'm really excited for the automation skill. Automation call to arms, automate all instant skills, and war cries, so... We don't have to worry about it being on our left click. Like, we just don't need it anymore. And honestly, I'm kind of fine with that. The only problem that I am foreseeing is mine characters with detonate mines. But A, automation works with them. And B, they added a new, uh, uh, new, uh, mastery for mines where just mines detonate while you move, which is my preference, anyways. So. Nice. I know my mod is actually going to uh, be playing that as well. I assume he's sleeping. Ow. Well, the trap looks fun, though. I'm glad that it got a buff. Also, I didn't realize how strong the uh, uh, Pyroclast Mines of Sabotage are. That's just insane. Oh no, Turtle Hideout. Turtle Hideout? I don't know about Turtle Hideout. Wait, am I, did I miss the boss? Oh, there's the boss. Who the fuck were you? Nope. I've been doing a terrible job of keeping up with the news, despite, like, a being a Path of Exile channel. Well, not completely Path of Exile. Like, I've been playing a lot of Pal World lately, so that's been kind of my focus. Just while I've been waiting for the uh, League to, to uh, end slash start. I mean, that sounds pretty good. Oh, so it's basically the the um the the uh, world tortoise then from um oh I don't I do not know which culture has tortoise creation theory I think that's what it's called I d I don't know the truck terminology for it 
$90 for a hideout? Well, actually, I'm Canadian, so that would be $120 for a hideout. That's ridiculous. Like, I'm, I'm a cheap ass. I'd pay $5 for a hideout. <laughs> It also makes me really, really lucky that I have a particular chatter who likes to to buy me stuff in this game, because, oh boy, I do not buy stuff otherwise. I got an entire hideout full of frogs on Tuesday, on the last stream. I'm very grateful for, for him for that. Okay, so you get coins too, okay. If you can't buy it without that, though, that's kind of sad. You know, I'm really excited. I think I think I'm going to be able to get this build to 20 million. It'll be my first uh, build to break 20 million DPS. Yeah, I mean, I don't usually have someone to buy me stuff, but I'm still very happy because I'm surrounded by toads right now. And frogs. He literally bought me one frog. One, every, one of every frog and toad in the game. We have our blue king frog, our red king frog, we have our fiery frog, we have our icy frog, we have our red frog. Other ones must be stuck down here again. Oh, we have the blue frog bear. Where are they? Oh, we have the green green princess frogs down here. Oh, and the other green frogs too. They're down here with their subject. That's okay. Hey, the important thing isn't your playtime, it's about how much fun you're having. You're having fun, you're having fun. I say that as someone with almost 5,000 hours in the game. <laughs> uh, for better or for worse. Ooh, no, not can't regen. Please, no. I don't hate myself. Uh, reduce flash charges, I can do that. Wait, can I do elemental weakness? Yes, baby. Maybe. Yeah, I can do elemental weakness. Okay. Oh, I hate using smoke mine. There's a reason why I'm not going to be using smoke mine on the new character. I'm only using it right now because it was already this character is already set up. And I don't want to set up another character at past the five and a half hour mark in the stream. Or not set up another character, but like reset up this character. Oh wow, it sounds like you're really really going for it. <laughs> Well, I didn't initially intend it, but I am going to stream tomorrow night, uh, because I totally forgot it was League Start, so I didn't plan to stream, but I will be streaming tomorrow night at League Start. So if you want to League Start with other people, you can uh, come watch and hang out and chat, maybe listen in, put it on uh, low quality and put it in the background, you know. That's fair. This is certainly a game you can get your get your hyper fo uh eh. hyper hyper focusing fix. There's just like so much to it. There's still parts of the game that I don't understand and like mechanics I just don't know after 5000 oh nearly 5000 hours into the game. There's just so much to it. And like they keep iterating, so 
it makes it harder to even catch up, which is fine, honestly, because, like, it still remains good. It's just... We don't really run out of stuff, which I appreciate. I think this character only has, like, a mil like one or two million DPS. But I seem to be doing decently well. I think it's because I have legacy items. Since this is, like, my old character. Thank you for the follow. I really appreciate it. It's podium. Like, I play with uh, private leagues so we can only trade with each other and stuff. Oh, that sounds really cool. See, the thing is, I am, like... I am a, someone who plays the market, so I tend to, like, I need a larger market to be able to enjoy myself, usually. Also, I tend to play weird builds, and when you play really weird builds, it means that you're going to have to spend some time, like, you're going to have to buy things that are uber-specific sometimes. It'd be fun as a challenge, though, to play, like, groups, like, group self-found kind of thing. Maybe when I have, like, more... Maybe when I'm, like, actually have made this into a job, then I can sponsor a uh, private league. That'd be really fun, actually. I'd love to do that. And this character's doing pretty well, considering that it was a... Um, that it's from Harvest. And I wasn't nearly as good at... 10 leagues ago as I am now. I kind of... I don't remember the name of it, but, like, there's... There's, there's, there's a story out there that's basically of how how someone traded a pen all the way up through like set different sets of items with other people to eventually have a house kind of thing and that's kind of how i like to play trade where like i take a small amount of stuff that i have and i turn it into more I can barely see what's going on. There's just so much shit happening. Uh-oh. There you are. Oh, the forms. Oh. Wow. Well, I mean, that would be really nice if it wasn't about to be deleted in 12 hours. <laughs> Uh... Sigh. Ah, oh, my beautiful foil mage blood. I never got to use you for anything, because I never had a thing to use you for. <laughs> But I'm still happy you exist. Invitations, invitations, invitations. Invitations, invitations. Inventor is full of invitations. And I'm gonna vendor them for scraps. Oh, this is literally just scraps of wisdom. Okay, you know what? I'll just leave them to be deleted. It's easier than deleting them manually. Oh 
my gosh. Well, I definitely have enough footage for a build video now. Oh. Okay, it is time that I go have some sort of dinner or something. Okay. Stretch. Well, thank you all for staying throughout this video. I expected to be able to go through and update multiple builds. I spent the entire time on one fucking build. I cannot believe that it took so much time, but it absolutely was worth it. I'm very happy with it, being that its base version starts at just below 5 million damage. Its better version is 7.5 million, and its uber version seems to be over 20 million now. So, I'm pretty fucking excited to test out how this goes. And I have named the my new Pyroclast Mines build Pyroclasm. After my mod. Or one of them, at least. So, thank you everyone who's watched. Thank you to Sphodium, James, and Frost for following today. I really appreciate it. You're helping me get closer and closer to that uh, 50, that mark of uh, 50 followers where I get to be an affiliate. That's a very, 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 very big deal for me. <laughs> yeah, I need eight more followers and then I'm ready. Oh, that's going to be so good. Then I can have subscribers. Yay! <laughs> so everyone who's here and has been here, thank you so much. I appreciate you very much. This will be going up on the at Black Hat Streams channel probably tomorrow. Uh, we're going to be streaming tomorrow as well, probably sometime around the same time we usually do, which is five or sorry, two p.m. PST, five p.m. EST. Uh, it is currently ten thirty in EST, so whatever that converts. And yeah. 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 There'll also be some highlights going up on at Black Hat Studio, as well, like still some stuff from Affliction, as well as the new build guide for this will actually be going up properly. So, thank you all for coming today. I really appreciate it. And I hope you have a wonderful evening. And remember to follow and subscribe. It really helps. Also, you see more cool shit.